So I wanted to, I think, I think if you're at like the, the biggest issue with the movie, and maybe this is like jumping way ahead of ourselves, but this, this movie is directed by M. Night Shyamalan. Yes. Who is no, known for twists. Right? Yeah. No, I mean, that's his signature. And I, doing this actually gave me a reason to watch The Sixth Sense, which I hadn't ever done before. Interesting. Um, I enjoyed Wait, it. Really? You never saw The Sixth yeah. Sense? Well, the movie was ruined for me, like, pretty... Oh, uh, sure. Pretty the, that, that was not a well-kept twist. No, and and knowing that going in, it does kind of actually take away from the movie. Whereas, like, if you know the twist of Unbreakable, or even Signs, it's not really a big deal. Whereas, like, the one in Sixth Sense, you're like, I you know exactly what the problem is, and it would just be as easy as somebody saying this. I'm not going to spoil it. It's, it's like, a 30-year-old movie, but whatever. Anyway, um... <laughs> The Last Airbender does not have a twist. It's true. Which is really the only thing wrong with it. So I was thinking yes, we could... Yes, that's the that's one problem. The only thing I've got a couple I of ideas for, for twists, but I'm also open to others. The first one is that the entire movie is just a fever dream that Appa is having trapped in ice. Just figured go with the easy Ooh, one right out of the gate. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the dream angle did come to mind for me as well, mm -hmm. but I wasn't sure whose. I like, I like that it's Appa's. Appa's dreams are only, like, real life. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're, like, live action. Like, yeah. This is animated Appa dreaming of live action yeah. world. Yes. <laughs> I can see that. Oh, um, Aang was named the Avatar because Master Yatsu felt bad for him because he's a weird kid. Oh, no, he's just a regular kid! Yeah, he's just a regular kid. He's just a regular airbending he, kid. But he's just like, this This kid's so weird. Oh, like, we need no. to give him a little that boost. Yeah, not All of these were, like, pretty bad, actually. Pretty dark. Oh, that actually hurts my soul uh, a little yeah. bit. <laughs> This one's also sad. Uh, so the Avatar was actually killed years ago, and he was reincarnated, reincarnated into the Fire Nation, and Zuko is really the Avatar, and it's his dad who sent him on a mission with his uncle for training, and he sent him on a wild goose chase just so he could train him how to be a real man. See, the only issue with that one is a lot of plot holes. I don't... Because it, it could I didn't see any plot holes in this movie. <laughs> you know what? You're right. That could work. I, I saved my favorite for last, though. So the, the, here's the twist, right? So the reason Aang is a vegetarian is because winged lemur meat is actually fucking delicious. And if he eats so much as like a single chicken nugget, that'll bring him that much closer to eating like a Momo burger. That's you just want him to eat Momo. I definitely didn't include that in the plot. They talked about that on the podcast, which is funny. They talked about what? eating Momo. Sokka, really? Sokka wanted well, I mean, to eat Momo. Yeah, because Sokka did want to eat him. I just re I, I just powered through the entire first season in prep for today. And yeah, so yeah. that is Sokka's immediate reaction. He wants to eat Momo. So that I, one's the one. That has That's to be the, the one. Twist. You yeah. nailed it. And uh, like Angering's up multiple times. He's like, I don't eat meat. Yeah. And then he just like, he, like stares eyes. at Momo. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what What do we think Momo... Uh, f well... We won't say like specifically Momo, but like flying lemur meat. What do we think it tastes like? Uh, flying lemur meat. I I don't know. I feel like he'd be stringy and kind of kind of gross. Yeah. But but I mean, if we're running on the premise that it's delicious, actually, right? Right. Um, right. I don't know. Maybe it's like an elk burger or something like that. It really has to be like rare. Like it's it's a treat. Have you ever had? Bur burger that's like it's called a fitty fitty. It's like half bacon, half yeah. oh yeah like burger. And it's just like I like I've tried to quit pork a number of times, but it's that like one food product that keeps dragging me back. That's Momo. Yep, he's the bacon. Oh my god, <laughs> of, of the outer world. Welcome to Drazzled, the podcast that takes award-winning worst films and fixes them. I'm host Jack Holbertson, and here to suffer alongside me, as always, is Joe Beardbender Nealis. Hello, Hotman. And today's guest, Faith, who's is is like Prince. And it only has that first part. Just that's that's the whole name. Faith, Faith, the pun bender. How you doing, Faith? <laughs> oh, pun bender. Oh, Flamio. <laughs> <laughs> what's going on? I'm saying, can you cut that out, please? Nope, that's staying. <laughs> All the movies on Razzled. <laughs> One worst picture: the Razzies, the year they were released. The Razzies, for those who don't know, are something of a reversed Oscars. They recognize the worst films of the year. Well, I usually pick the movie for our guest. Uh, with 42 movies remaining, Faith chose. The form of her own destructor, 2010's The Last Airbender. Faith, who hurt you? Uh, I'm Night Shyamalan. <laughs> with this Fair. movie, with this movie. No, you're right, you're right, right. So what did you, what did you know about Avatar going into the movie? Because you saw it in theaters, right? Yeah, unfortunately, yeah. I watched the whole show, and then I heard that they were making a movie in a live action, and I was like, oh, it's, and M. Night Shyamalan was directing it. I'm like, oh, this is going to be amazing, and then I saw it. I had some opinions about it. 
Joe, what did you what did you know going in? Had you watched the show before the movie came out? Yes, yeah, I had watched the okay. show. I, I had watched the entire first season when it first aired. Then kind of lapsed for a while, went back and watched the rest of it in college. Uh, and then after that, at some point, watched the movie with some friends, and all of us regretted that. Uh, sure. But it was well after it had been on DVD or on demand or something. Okay. Uh, before we decided to do this movie, I, I was completely fresh. I didn't know anything about it. B- besides, this was a movie that ruined M. Night Shyamalan's career. For a, for a while. while. Anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah. So... I'm going to attempt to summarize this movie, which itself is like a two-hour Wikipedia summary of a 22-episode TV series. But it's cool. Like, I'm going to do it in like three minutes. Uh, spoilers for The Last Airbender in the first season of Avatar The Last Avatar, Airbender. Avatar yeah, Last Airbender. Uh, to follow Joe uh, timing. A hundred years ago, the Avatar went down to the corner store for a pack of cigarettes and never came back. <laughs> The Fire Nation, one of four element-based nations, took advantage of Daddy's absence and went to war against the other three nations, genociding the shit out of the Air Nation. Katara and Sokka, incredibly pale Inuit siblings, <laughs> discovered treasure inside of an iceberg. Uh, first there's Appa, in the show, a beloved beast that's a mixture of My Neighbor Totoro and the Kappas from My Neighbor Totoro. However, here he proves that the Uncanny Valley can be applied to fictional flying bison. Uh, also inside is Aang, pronounced here as Ong, to piss off every fan of the show. <laughs> Aang is, in fact, the, air, uh, the avatar that fucked off 100 years earlier. Upon awakening, a beam of light fires into the sky, a literal plot flare gun, summoning our lead antagonist, S- Zuko. Zuko and very skinny Uncle Iroh <laughs> arrive in... Uh, Katara and Zuko's village to harass senior citizens in hopes of uh, locating the Avatar. You see, Zuko's dad, uh, the king, sent him on like a snipe hunt uh, after Zuko gave him some sass about sending a bunch of young kids off the war to die, something that's really, really ridiculous and would only ever happen in a cartoon. Aang gives himself up to avoid violence. Weight-shamed Uncle Iroh gives Aang a pop quiz that uh, proves that he is indeed the Avatar, at which time Aang fucks right the fuck off using a dusty, swirly power thing. (laughs) Kind of like a vacuum cleaner, but, like, just the dirt part. Oh, what if you only had a shop vac the entire time? <laughs> uh, it's, I'm, I'm gonna, it's very pretty. Um, <laughs> uh, Katar and so- Sokka, uh, riding Appa, save him. Aang and the gang head to the South Air Nomad Land in hopes of connecting with Aang's master, Gyatsu? Right? Okay. Through tedious exposition, Katara explains that the Fire Nation genocided the fuck out of the Air Nomads, something that we could have guessed from the river of skulls and bones that lay uh, layer the fields. Aang disassociates and talks to a dragon who tells him to learn air water water bending or some shit. That's like when the pizza arrived, so I wasn't really <laughs> paying attention. His friends shout him back to reality before the three head off to the Earth Kingdom to inspire a poorly choreographed Bollywood dance fight between the fire baddies and the sad earth benders who just plum forgot that they were in a prison made of dirt and rock. <laughs> sure did. This is where the film learns to make a one shot boring. This is an incredibly difficult shot to shoot. It was apparently done like up to 60 times and it was still really, really boring. Uh, somewhere in this mess, we learn that Commander Zhao, who is definitely not the real bad guy, he and Zuko's father talk about how dumb and stupo- stupid Zuko is. Zuko has dinner with Uncle, where he bitches about being too busy to drink and fuck. <laughs> and he, like, talks to some little kid, and he's like, so what do you think of that Zuko dude? And he's like, sucks. <laughs> Aang side quests to another air kingdom where old man Judas leads air Jesus into the hands of Roman <laughs> soldiers. More importantly, off screen, the, the voice actor making Appa's grunts gives in to screaming throughout the whole scene. <laughs> Overcome with existential strife. <laughs> My favorite part of the is that's actually D. Bradley Baker. <laughs> oh, it's like the actual opera? Yeah. That's why I was like, he he just was done. <laughs> uh, Zuko sneaks into Zhao's base disguised as the Blue Spirit? Yes. Okay. He helps Aang escape. During the process, his mask is shattered, revealing Zuko underneath. In a bit of excellent characterization, Zuko and Aang discuss their complicated relationship. Aang says they don't, he doesn't have to be enemies with Zuko. Just kidding, that was the show. Uh, here, Zuko <laughs> barks at Aang, who then fucks off. Uh, <laughs> the gang gets to the North Pole, where Katara and Aang learn waterbending from PC Master Paku. Paku, yeah. Soka and Princess Wienerhair immediately fall in love. <laughs> Without any conflict, either internal or external. Uh, Zal tries to blow Zuko to smithereens, but Zuko ain't even worried about it. Uh, the Fire Nation attacks the North Pole, and everyone fights. Uh, Dragon Daddy tells Aang to water bend the Fire Nation away. Iroh pops up to exposition that the moon makes waterbenders, like, strong as fuck or something. 
And Zal's like, hold my beer. I got to go kill a fish. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant oversimplification. Yes, Excellent. Zal. Aang's spirit uh, hangs out in dreamland. Katara fights Zal, but Zal fucks up that fish. The fish is the moon spirit, by the way. It's cool, though, because uh, Zuko's weekend crush is part fish, and that's the Fish take the fish takes the fish place of the yin yang moon pole. I wrote, you just got yourself so mixed up on so many <laughs> levels. So just, just, <laughs> this, is, this is the movie. This Literally. is 10 out of 10 what the movie is. That's what they refer to them as. I think I'm just like naming off like B sides for a Radiohead album. It almost sounds that way, honestly. <laughs> Iroh firebends like a boss fight, begging the question, why didn't we have this legit coal fire bending throughout the whole movie? I don't know, but we didn't. Uh, Zuko wants to go fuck up Zhao, but Uncle's like, nah, don't do it. So the water be- benders like just drown the shit out of Zhao instead in like an orb of water that floats above the air and definitely traumatized some seven-year-olds. Oh, yeah. That was gruesome. The movie ends with Aang summoning a giant wi- a giant wave that washes the baddies away. Everyone then bows to Aang, and Aang faces his fear of being bowed to, and uh, he-, he survives. Also, no- notably... Does not know how to bow, Doesn't which I, bow. I still assert is the actual conflict of the entire movie, <laughs> because he's just too embarrassed by the fact that he bows like an idiot. But like they accept him at the end, and that's that's the, it's about acceptance. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> just kidding. The movie ends with Zuko's father setting up a young and hopeful actress for a sequel that mercifully never happened. Sorry, young actress, your dreams were squashed. Uh, so that was definitely three minutes, right? It was definitely like not. Like, no. uh, it was, it's not like that was six minutes or anything. It's fine. We did interrupt you a little bit, though. I will. Po- I, w- I do want to point out one thing. You you made it. You made a note about the mispronunciation of of Ang throughout the film, and you mispronounced Zhao every yeah. single time. What, how is it? What is it? Zhao. You said. Zhao. You said Zhao. Zhao. Yeah. Damn that bad. It. God damn it! It's fine. What I like, it's fine. I don't think Asif Manvi gives a shit. <laughs> Just... Not even a little bit. Uh, what I like about them calling him Ong in the movie is that it was like the one moment that anyone in the production is like, let's be sensitive to the like, right? the treatment of these people's culture, but then fuck the rest of it up. Seriously, like we're gonna waste our time casting all these fucking white people mm-hmm. as Inuits, but no, we care about the pronunciation yeah. and how that would have happened in a real culture. Like fuck right off. <laughs> Shaman's like, but but it's it's more it's closer to the way it would have been said. And like yeah, but those Inuit children are pale, pale. as fuck. Like compared to everyone else in this in the film, Jackson Rathbone is like Conan O'Brien pale. <laughs> Just give me that skim milk. Um, hey, let's do some stats. Let's do some stats. So the last Airbender was the 2010's Razzie's worst picture winner. That's the 31st 31st Golden Raspberry winner. It won in a number of categories: worst director, worst screenplay. This is not my my verbiage. It sounds like it, but it's not. Worst eye-gouging misuse of 3D. Yeah, it was a special category that year, if I'm not mistaken. And honestly, it it should have been. Deserved, yeah. yeah. Worst supporting actor, Jackson Rathbone, in not one, but two movies, The Last Airbender and The Twilight Saga, Eclipse, uh, as Soka and Jasper. Well, he was he was Jasper. nominated for both. I think he won for Sokka, if I'm not mis- Is that how that worked? I think they just gave it all to him, like, just as actor. I guess um, that's fair enough. If I, but, like, if I was him, I'd be like, I want to separate Razzies. Like, give me one for Sokka and one mm-hmm. for Jasper. Which I, I earned these. Yeah. <laughs> I want both. If, if a name actor actually shows up, they should, whatever they want. I think oh, Holly, yeah. Halle Berry showed up for Catwoman. Halle Berry did show up for Catwoman, <laughs> yeah. which is actually a power move. Yeah. That's, that rules. Yeah. It was also nominated in a couple of areas. We're supporting actor uh, Dave, uh, oh my God, Dave Patel. Uh, Dev Patel. Uh, it's not like you just watched a movie with him in it last night. It was like a two-hour movie with Dev, and I'm just like, Dave, how do you spell it? Dave Patters- Patterson. Uh, <laughs> uh, it also was nominated for Worst Screenplay Couple, and I fucking hate it when they do this. The entire cast, whenever they're on screen, was nominated for Ensemble slash Couple. Like, but that's not... <sighs> that's not how that works. That's not how it works. No, that's... I mean, get... I mean, I get everyone was bad in this movie, yeah. but, like, fuck, guys. They did the same thing with Battle Battlefield Earth, where they're like, anytime somebody's on screen with... No, go on. Oh, okay. <laughs> anytime I, I somebody's should... on screen with... I had actually forgotten his name, which is jo- why... Don Travolta? Thank you. <laughs> I know, I would no, I would argue that Forrest Whitaker shines in some of those yeah, moments. Yeah, no, he, but... he saves it. That's so... a different episode. You're, that you're, you're still wrong, editing. the Razzies. It also won for worse pe- prequel, remake, ripoff, or sequel. Good. Yeah. Is that them some stats? Them some stats. What are we on scores? Uh, we'll, we'll get to that. Okay. We'll get to that. I did a little 
I organized things a little differently this time because I wanted to say what it had won, then it, <laughs> explain yourself. <laughs> it's just a section of like, ex- explain your, like, what did you do? So I wanted to say like, all right, so we all know it was awful. Here's why. Then we see if the scores were deserved or not. Okay. So. Uh, so the reason we got this movie is because M. Night Shyamalan's daughter went as Katara for Halloween, which is like, you're a cool dad, but maybe not as good enough of a director. So <laughs> a lot of information in this section comes from a leaked source, but so much of it lines up with like what we know for fact that I, I'm leaning out, like not just a pinch of salt, but like a couple of cups. Of salt. A couple of cups of salt's yeah. fair. Yeah. Namely, this first one. <laughs> The movie came under fire for possible nepotism when Nicola, I don't know say her name. Nicola? Nicola Tesla was cast as Katara. <laughs> Weird choice yeah. considering he's dead, yeah. but you know. But he's an electric god. Uh, Nicola Pels, Pels, who was cast as Katara because her daddy is a literal billionaire. Yeah. Nelson Pels. And everyone after that, like, so she, she was cast, she was quote unquote cast first, and then everyone else was cast around her. Yeah, the things the things that I had read were suggesting that Shyamalan had a similar inkling about her that he had about Haley Joel Osment before he was doing The Sixth Sense, that hmm. he never had anyone else in mind, that there was something special about this kid. Now, that something special very well may be may have been Daddy's Billions of Dollars, right. who knows, but clearly that inkling was wrong, Considering the performance and... I mean, I don't feel bad. Even if even if she, like, auditioned and Shyamalan was like, great, you're in. They didn't even audition anyone else for Katara, I don't think. They didn't, and she just bought, like, a $10.5 million mansion with her boyfriend, so I don't feel terrible about shit-talking her, personally. Yeah, like, I don't want to like, talk shit on the performance of a child. That's That just feels kind of gross, but also, I think it's a valid criticism. Yeah. This is just, It's a bad choice on Shyamalan's part. And, and that, like, that's why I don't, like, Rathbone wasn't great, but also, like, he was cast solely because he kind of looked like her older brother, like, visually. If you're eh. basing the casting off of her exclusively, yeah. then I guess. Though age range-wise, it's a little goofy, because he's, like, ele- at the time, he was, right. like, 11 years older than her, I think. Yeah. Is that right? I was, I, I don't know exactly, but <laughs> I wonder that while watching it, because he looked way older than yeah. Sokka should have been. So he was a, he was a fan of the show. Oh, okay. And was, like, all about being Sokka and, like, including the humor. And he was pumped. I mean, I don't think he would have pulled it off. Didn't he? I had read somewhere that he had originally auditioned for Zuko. I think he did. Which is yeah. bonkers to me, but... <laughs> but he's like, I'll be Sokka. Like, they're, they're both great parts. Like, uh, or they should be. <laughs> well, you know. It's surprising to hear that he wanted to include, like, humor and stuff like that. Because when you watch it, you don't see any of that. There's none. It's... Ugh. Well... We'll I'll, get into that, I'm I'll, sure. We'll, but. we'll get into that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the original script... Shyamalan's first draft was, it would have been like a seven hour movie. Yeah. Like he included bits from pretty much every episode. Yep. The the executives were like, you, you got to cut this down, my dude. Like by a lot. By a lot. And Shyamalan had, I think he'd written every, all of his movies by that point. Um, yeah, I think so. Well, they brought in a ghost writer to. Who was uncredited. Yeah. I had like, hacked the shit apart. I had read that claim in a few different places that like after a bunch of back and forth with the studio and with having to whittle things down so much that he eventually just like lost all interest and yeah. and just like kind of backed off and was like I'm just gonna do whatever they write and collect my paycheck I'm getting to that too because like that was a big part of it the only person he did cast and like wanted to cast was Noah Ring and that was because he, he looked like Aang and he was a black belt in Taekwondo right like, that was his whole audition tape was yeah. his martial arts reel if I'm not mistaken yeah. yeah and I guess the other kids in his martial arts class I don't know what you would call it uh, we're like, you look like Aang, go audition. And I'm like, well, yeah. But he he had never acted before. And then you take him and you put him on a green screen stage. And he's like, I'm acting to nothing. And I have no idea what I'm doing. Do, do, do some flips. If he I'm did not some mis- good flips. He did some sweet flips. Hell yeah. But the, it, they also like put him through like a month long like acting boot camp more yeah. or less to try and like train him up and get him ready to like do anything. It's, not and how acting works. it's, and it, it's already hard when you you have no acting experience and then to be put in a green screen room with nothing else. Yeah. That I can't even imagine. Yeah, like I feel te- I feel terrible for him to have to be put through that. We have so much pressure yeah. for like such a gigantic, expensive motion picture to rest on your shoulders, and you've never acted before. It's wild. And he only he only did one movie after this, 
and then he, he's done. He's done any movies. Yep. Uh, and I don't blame him. That sucks. So anyway, the executives realized that they would pretty much cast everyone as white people. And they're like, oh, well, the only lead that's left that is not kind of not cast um, is Zuko. Uh, and he was he had actually been cast with Jesse McCarthy. But McCartney. Jesse, McCar- Paul McCarthy. Ma- Paul McCartney's Par- son. Paul McCartney's. Notably white as fuck son. <laughs> yes. Wait, Jesse McCartney was going to be Zuko? Yes. You're that was the original casting. Was yeah. my- the only reason it didn't happen was because his touring schedule for his stupid pop album <laughs> did not. Jesse McCartney fan. It- <laughs> that would have been insane. Right? It would have made no sense. It would have been no. so strange. Can oh, you, for strange. those of us who are 80, would you tell uh, who's Jesse McCarthy? Yeah. McCartney. He... McCarthy. Ma- <laughs> Jesus Christ, Jack. He did a lot of pop songs, especially for, like, Disney. Um, mm. He's also the voice of Roxas in Kingdom okay. Hearts 2. Oh, that's right. I forgot I'm, about I'm that. I'm pretty sure that's him. Um, I think that's right. I think I did read that. Yeah. And then he was on an episode of Sweet Life of Zack and Cody. So it would have been a really (laughs) weird choice to have him. I can't even, like, imagine that in my head. Like, I remember when I read that, I felt like I had just, like, lost my tether to reality. It was (laughs) such a strange thing. I was like, Jesse McCartney. No. No. Yeah. Like, oh, that's so weird. (laughs) So weird with his his highlights. It's even stranger to think that Dev Patel was the back up to jesse mccartney well, yeah. <laughs> only because they're like oh we lost him shucks now we can incorporate somebody who's not white yeah so they cast dev patel which then they're like oh well now everyone in the fire nation has to be a brown person unintentionally make unintentionally maybe making it like the white people versus the brown people yeah which is not not good you don't I, want that the thing that kills me about that is that, like if you look at the world that's built here like these these nations are massive. <laughs> There's plenty of room here for people to live in like different climate areas on the same continent and to be different colors. That should be fine. That should be a no-brainer. But no. <laughs> mm. Mm. So Shyamalan is from Philadelphia. And... Oh, right. Yeah, like he mostly, up until that point, had filmed all of his stuff in Philly. And he was like, I want to maybe do some of this here. And the executives were like, yo, bud, like, oh, and, and, and he wanted to shoot some stuff on, on location to, to capture the sweeping vistas of the Water Nation and the Fire Nation. And the executives were like, what about the green screen? Because you're going to have to do that anyway, right? And he's like, okay. <laughs> so they let him shoot like a handful of things in Philly, but like most of it was a green screen. Uh, so he's like made to direct a script he didn't want with actors he mostly didn't pick in a location that didn't exist. Uh, it's been theorized that, like as you said, Shyamalan phoned it in, cast a check, and just like fucked off. It wouldn't be until 2019. I think he was like speaking at some college when he's like, "Yeah, The Last Airbender," and what was the other movie? He did Air Extinction Earth Earth with Nepotism Son? You know, the After Earth. Yeah, that one. But that was a Shyamalan film. Pretty sure. Shit. Anyway, called that an Airbender junk movies really yeah oh i didn't find that yeah. quote Shit. it took a while because like he spent so long defending it until like 2019 he's like i don't care anymore <laughs> he didn't really have a career after those two movies so he's just like ah fuck it i'm not gonna lose anything if i say it's a junk movie fair <laughs> uh also the like the special effects i don't this this baffles me because the special effects were done by ilm i don't do you know who ilm is nope. it's industrial in- lights and magic yeah in the movie industry, they are the top. They are the best. Mm. So I don't understand how they looked so bad. They did say that at the time, it was 2010, the fire effects were some of the hardest that they've ever, ever done. Oh, okay. But they also, so, and this answered a big question we had, like, why doesn't Aang at the end of the movie do his, I call it a wa- water kaiju because I don't know what he's doing there. Uh, oh, him uh, communing with the ocean spirit and f- and them together lashing out over the death of the moon spirit. Yeah, like a water, water kaiju. Water kaiju. Yeah, yeah. no, sure. water kaiju is yeah. a really good shorthand for it, honestly. <laughs> I, it's He's doing almost like a full water Pacific Rim. You're so lost. <laughs> I am. It's fine. Shyamalan wanted to do that. Like He wanted to have, have it the way it was done in the show. Of course you want to do that. It's an amazing spectacle. Yeah. yeah. Well, ILM was like, my dude, um, we either need more time or more money or both. This is not going to be an easy thing for us to do. And this one was already expensive as and, fuck. Yeah. And we'll get to why time was not even an option in a minute. So they all kind of just settled on like, what about a big water wave? Everyone's like, fine. <sighs> yeah. So all that, all of that, you have all that. And then Avatar happened. 
not Avatar The Last Airbender. James Cameron's Avatar. Yeah. The Blue <laughs> Kitty People. Yes. Yes. It was released. It wasn't even released that summer. It was released the summer or the the Christmas prior. So it was. Yeah, it was like December 20 or 2009. Yeah. Yeah. But it like it dominated. Like I can't stress enough how everywhere this stupid cat, blue cat fucking movie movie was. Yep. And and to, to like throw some numbers at you, it was the first movie to break two billion dollars at the box office. Right. Which, if you include inflation, it's only the second highest earning movie of all time. Uh, Gone with the Wind is the first. Um, which it, it just keep they just keep re releasing Gone with the Wind in theaters, and then everybody goes and sees it, and it's like <laughs> fuck you. Um, so that movie made a bazillion dollars, and the executives were like, I want some of that sweet blue fuck cat money. Uh, <laughs> by which they meant 3D money. Y yes. Blue fuck cat money. Yeah. Yeah. Just... Uh, <laughs> you were going to show this to your parents, were you? No. Okay. <laughs> well, I was going to talk about Sigourney Weaver because I love her in that movie, but I was like... Oh, yeah, no, you well, can. She rules. She yeah, was, believe. Like, that was, that, she was the movie for me. She yeah. was the best part. I, I honestly haven't seen the movie. I, I can't say whether it's good or not for me personally, but... I saw it a couple of times, and it's a fun spectacle. I, I think it speaks volumes that it has almost no cultural footprint outside of fuckable blue cat people and yeah. unobtainium. I don't know what that is. Yep. It's the bullshit name for an element that they're mining out of the planet. Ooh, they didn't they really try very hard with they that. They couldn't though. obtain it. It was unobtainium. They couldn't... Jack, I... Jack, they couldn't obtain it, Jack. <laughs> It was they couldn't obtain it, Jack. They anyway. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. And the, the, sad, the, the saddest thing about all this is we will never get to talk about Avatar the Blue Cat fuck movie. No. I, I, like as a as a feature of the episode. no yeah yeah it, it, I, I don't even think it was nominated for any nope. Razzies nope. which is kind of amazing yeah. no, well, every, everyone loved the Blue Cat well fuck, maybe. we'll have to wait and see how the next four of them do. <laughs> I was gonna say, isn't aren't they making more? Oh yeah, like, yeah. It's he's got like while, he's right? got a total of five planned, which is bonkers. I was gonna <laughs> Just... say, like, what's his timeline? Because the first one came out how many years ago? Like two thousand nine. So yeah, wow. twelve years ago now. Yeah. I think I don't even want to talk. I don't even want to give him the airtime. Fuck fair. you, James Cameron. I love Terminator. <laughs> um, I was gonna say, I love Titanic. So. Yeah, you've done some really good work. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm, it's I'm true. sorry. We're sorry, James Cameron. <laughs> Uh, so they, because of Avatar, the blue cat fuck movie, the last airbender, they changed their name because like, people are going to get confused. They're going to think it's blue cats fucking and said they're going to get like little children fighting each other. Objectively better. <laughs> right, right, right. But like what really fucked up the last airbender is the executives were like, okay, well you not need to do 3D. Like the, the reason Avatar made a gazillion dollars is because it was, it was 3D and 3D hadn't been for that time. It really was a huge step forward with 3D technology. Like, before that, it's like, you're wearing the little goggles, and it's, like, red and blue. I mean, there were still glasses associated with this yeah, 3D, yeah. but it wasn't it wasn't the cheesy red-blue comic book stuff. No, no, no. And I will say, for, for everything we just said about Avatar, yeah. the use of 3D was genuinely good. It wasn't out of place. It felt... It, it added to the immersion. Yeah, but, like, the whole movie was made to use that technology yeah, from the ground up yeah. that's the thing and but but the executives on airbender were like let's make some of that sweet 3d money and shaman's like we have six months till we're releasing in july july is i don't know if it's still the case but it used to be like that is the best time to release a movie like the, specifically the fourth of july weekend yeah so they weren't going to change the release date there's like all right ilm or whoever's doing the conversion you have six months go and because of that they trimmed 30 minutes of the movie yep which part of that apparently we lost was it the kiyoshi it was the kiyoshi warriors we lost the kiyoshi warriors I know, they filmed that oh, there was a promotional poster yeah. featuring suki oh wow. yeah like they were all ready to have her in it and then they lost it I feel like they took out all the character development parts because that, yep. that whole they episode. They did. In order to, like, they're like, oh, we can cut this out but still keep the plot, which is why the whole movie's just plot. Just plot, yeah. That makes sense. Arguably just exposition. Yeah. Yeah. And they, they're they like, oh, well, there's parts that we don't have on screen because there's, like, a bunch of stuff that Katara just narrates. That's why. That would be why. Yes. So, with all of that in mind, <laughs> here, are the, here are the scores. The general Rotten Tomatoes score is 5%. The audience score on Rotten Tomatoes is, what do you think? 2%. 8%. Ah, Jack, you made the, made the classic mistake. Audience are stupid. Ah, piss. <laughs> Jack, cut that out. Uh, 
<laughs> no, the audi- not, audiences are way more forgiving. That's no, that, that's I mean, that's the that's the correct way to put that. <laughs> yes. So the audience gave it a thirty percent. Thirty? Yeah. Really? Wow. Yeah. I don't Whew. know why or how, but they did. I do remember when I first saw it in theaters and I was a kid. I was like, mm. I guess it wasn't that bad because yeah. you know I'm seeing it live action. It was cool. I'm comparing the last Airbender to my experience watching Star Wars Episode One because like, I saw that when I was the sixth grade, I think. And at the time, like, ah, oh, pod racers are cool. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Where, like, I tried to watch it, I think this year, it hurt to get through. It's it was bad. Really, really bad. It's a very bad movie. <sighs> and then, then the IMDb score is out of 10. It, is it like a four? I was going to say two. It's four. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so let's let's go ahead and critique this. Let's get into the nuts and bolts. All right, of, uh, here we go. Why the... <laughs> I thought you were both... Faith just rubs her hands <laughs> in anticipation. I thought you were both cracking your knuckles at the same time. I was, yeah, I was <laughs> starting to. Oh God, who wants to talk about the cast? Not it. Not it. Ah oh, fuck. <laughs> uh, all right, so are we go? Are we starting with what works? Or are we starting? We, we are. We are talking talking about like who. Okay. Who works in the movie? Oh boy, I would say. I think there's an argument to be made for Dev Patel's Zuko and Sean Tobe's Iroh for being at least relatively good compared to everything else. They're, I think their interactions are definitely the bright spots. They got the closest to actually hitting the characters, even though like visually they don't make a lot of sense in terms of like it's a very skinny kind of gaunt Iroh. Zuko's scar is just barely visible depending on what angle you're viewing him from. But overall, I think their performances are still the most solid. Like I think, particularly their interaction before he goes off to try and and get into the the Northern Water Kingdom. If you had given those actors some actual meat to chew on, yeah, I think they could have done it. I think, yeah, I think that had you had you actually given them a decent script, and there had been like better development of like Zuko's rage and better implementation of it, because there are there are moments where Patel leans into it maybe a little bit too hard. That kind of throws yeah. off certain interactions, but overall, like. Not bad considering what they were being, what they were given. They they had emotion behind what they were doing, yeah. whereas yeah. it wasn't flat like some of the other performances. But I don't want to hold that against any of the other cast because they did what they could. Right? The yeah, yeah. I don't think there was any one actor that I'm like, you were fucking awful. Maybe Katara, but besides her. <laughs> uh, <laughs> But like she didn't really have anything to work with. Either. Yeah, that's yeah. the thing. Is like I think too much of too much of Katara was put into the narration yeah. and the exposition and everything. It's just it's real hard to act exposition. Story. What worked for you with them? Uh, I like the Boneyard. That when he goes, to, is it the Southern Airbenders? Yeah, the Southern the Southern Air Temple. They for like for a PG rated movie, they're like. Here's all these this genocided people. Thank yeah. you for that PG rating. Yeah. I'll give um, you that. That's that that was a that was a, a daring way to frame it. And then the water bubble murder of Who <gasps> of, of Z- Zhao. Zhao. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, that was gruesome. Yeah. Just I think it could have been more it could have hit harder if it was a character who I cared about rather than just a bunch of water benders. Well, but, we'll get into we'll get into that a little bit once we get into what doesn't work. Yeah, yeah, but it, it affected me unlike the rest of the movie. I will say and this is like this is fresh in my mind cuz I literally just watched this episode yesterday. Like that is how Zhao goes out in the show as well, but it's in the midst of a showdown with Zuko. And he is grabbed by the hand of like the the, uh, the of the ocean spirit that reaches oh. up and drags him under. It's not the waterbenders just mercilessly drowning him in midair. You didn't like, see him flailing as the life left his body. No, we saw no because what we see is that Zuko reaches out to try and mm. help him and save his mm. life, and he refuses. He's too proud, so he pulls his hand back and he accepts his fate, and he gets pulled under, and he's never seen again. Huh. Yeah, that's way better. Yeah, that's why I didn't. I, I can't agree with the the bubble. Uh-huh. I mean, yeah, it was. I mean, gruesome, Visually, yeah. but like you lost so much character through it because that moment with Zuko, him trying to help his enemy, and Zhao, it was just great in the show. No, I think that, given that's cool. I think given what we're given in the movie, it's fine. I wouldn't knock it, mm-hmm. cons- considering how much else there is to knock. It much like many other things could have been done better. Gotcha. Mm. Themes. What worked for you for themes? I wrote none. I got nothing. I have absolutely nothing. No. There are no themes. There are no themes in this. Yeah. Great, let's move on to what didn't work. 
uh, the cast. Every white actor. Uh, apparently the term race bending became a thing. There, Yeah, a, a website was started. <laughs> race, oh, really? Racebending.com. Yeah, it's still active. Uh, is still active and uh, documenting Hollywood whitewashing oh, to this okay. day. Did it start because of this movie? It started because of this wow. movie. So that did not work for me. Yeah, I mean, you touched on it a little bit earlier, how it really does, it, the way they cast it, it definitely came down to white versus brown. Yeah. And that led to some just really bonkers casting choices. Like, Asif Manvi. Like, I love as a comedic force. Like, I loved him on The Daily Show. I think I've seen him in, like, a handful of other movies here and there where he's, like, a comedic side character of some sort. He's not big bad material, and certainly not with the script that he was given or, like, the way he he carries out these scenes. Like, he wasn't awful. He was just miscast. He was very much miscast. Miscast and given a shit script. Yes. I I have... Poor Noah Ringer, poor Dev Patel. Um, I, God, I feel so bad for Noah Ringer. Like, that kid yeah. could have had so much potential. And, like, this definitely feels yeah. like the kind of movie where you would want you would want to get somebody who is an unknown actor yeah. and give them a shot at something big. But, like, to take a kid who has no acting experience and put that yeah. weight on his shoulders just isn't fair. I don't, I don't want to get too far into this in this podcast, but I'm very interested to see how the Netflix casting does. Yes. Yeah. As far as... Have they cast Aang yet? They've cast all of them, right? They've, they've yeah. announced the casting for Aang, Sokka, Katara, and Zuko, and there's not a white person among them. Yeah. So that helps. And I, I think I did see a clip that was released oh, of really? the live-action okay. Zuko, like, doing some of the stunts or, like, the Ooh. choreography of the battle. Oh, hell yeah. I think I saw... I'm not sure if it's, like... Sure. It was on TikTok, so... Right, right, You right, never right, know, yeah. but it looked interesting. Themes. What um, did not work for you? So this show is rich with so many different themes. I think from in, ter- in terms of like war and trauma, generational conflict, spirituality, and there's nothing. Yeah, that's that's what I have. It, like, it's you, they drop the ball so hard on everything. They surgically removed all of the themes. I mean, you could look at that moment with when Zuko's the Blue Spirit and him and Aang have that conversation. That that was it's one of the best parts of the series, like yeah. that yeah. first season for me. That and they just took it out. They just had Aang say, "I forget what he said," and then he just left. And Zuko was so unconscious. He was basically just like, "We don't, we don't got to be but or enemies." And Zuko's like, Arr! and then he yeah. runs away. I, I, can, I honestly can't remember if there was even dialogue in that scene in the movie. I, I think there was that single line. They're like, "We got to make sure we get that in there, or the fans will be mad." I think I've told you before when I watched through the first season, that scene was like, "Oh, I now I am a fan of this show." Before then, like this is I'm enjoying this. This uh, especially like as soon as he shows up as the blue spirit, I'm like, "This is super cool." Yeah. But that moment with them kind of post fight yeah it's an amazing moment just that to have that attempt to empathize with somebody who is has been after you yeah. for their own gain for so long and to try and reason with them and try and bridge that gap with them yeah you could say the same thing for when zuko and Zhao have that moment with the when Zhao dies they yeah. took that out yeah. so it's like they took that out and then the other moment from the show that i love is when uh, Uncle Iroh has a discussion with Zuko right before Zuko goes off to possibly die. You know, I've always, oh, I've always thought of you as a son, which, like, in any other show would have been super cheesy, but they pull it off super well. They, they earn it. They absolutely yeah. earn yeah. that moment. And uh, they, tr- they try, they have, like, a version of it in this film. Um, it's one of the better moments in the film, yeah, I'd say. Yeah, I agree. But it's still, it doesn't hold a candle to yeah. the, like, the earned outcome of that moment in in the show yeah Yeah. and you have a kid's show that's talking about like genocide and like ang loses his entire culture and you feel that in the show because katara she has that moment where she's like we're your family now we're gonna be your family and ang cries and like falls into her and that's just that's just gone story huh what uh (laughs) we kind of started into it like what what doesn't work as far as the story goes uh, I have. The movie was boring. It was all plot. <laughs> a summary, in fact. I hate it. In fact, I would watch Battlefield Earth again before I'd watch this movie. Jesus Christ. Yeah. <laughs> I absolutely would watch Battlefield Earth again before I would watch The Last Airbender. You've been drinking too much Corbango. <laughs> I can't. I, I can't. I can't support this. But there's. It really does just feel like a summary. Yeah. Like that's what it feels like. It doesn't feel like a story. It feels like they took a story and tried to summarize it in all exposition and like. If you're a fan of the show, you'll get this. Right. But if kind you're of. not, just try to follow along. Yeah, that's I think that's that you hit the nail on the head there. Like it, it really feels like if you've not if you're not familiar with the source material, 
like you can watch this entire movie and have no fucking clue what happened. Uh, it's magic. A kid magically moves water and stuff. Like the, you just lose all the elements of the show. I don't know. He did some karate and some dust <laughs> flew around. <laughs> this really angry kid just kept following him. I don't know what's going on. I think I said while we were watching it, like, had I not watched the whole first season, I would be incredibly lost. Thoroughly. Especially yeah. with yeah. Appa. You would be like, what yeah, is what the... that? <laughs> yeah, I didn't I didn't mention it in the summary. The only moment you really could see the, the full image of Appa is they cut to him and there's like kids playing on his six legs. Yeah, it's and I'm like, the the, the, the way it? they reveal that Appa can fly. Oh, is, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because that's not how that worked. Like there's a whole build up to him flying in the show because he can't do it at first because he's been frozen for a century. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> so yeah, to summarize, like, the movie is crammed full of plot. The changes to the movie actually make it more confusing. It does not streamline it. Um, and I hate it. Agreed. Agreed. Do you think it earned its accolades? Yes. Yeah. Like, just ill-conceived this movie yeah. is. Which, as I was about to say, like, we didn't, we, like, you didn't mention anything about the cinematography or the actual yeah. filming of it. Like, you did, like, you brought it up in the summary a little bit. Like, that shitty, unforgivable one-shot of that battle sequence because it not only ru it not only blatantly misunderstands the point of that scene in the show because they are in a they're just in like a, an encampment where there's dirt and rocks everywhere yeah. that's supposed to take place on like a steel barge or like oil rig yeah. out in the middle of the sea so that they can't earth bend and there's an element of that that particular village their spirit is broken it's not even explored. Aang gives, like, this nothing speech yeah. that's supposed to rouse them, and then Katara tackles a guy, and, <laughs> and like, nothing, none of it makes any goddamn sense, and then suddenly the camera's very slowly just spinning around, catching all this nonsense action that happens sequentially for reasons. <laughs> yeah, it definitely, I could, I could see the, um, second AD, or not second, god damn, we had the same discussion last time. <laughs> Fuck me. The other director that is not M. Night Shyamalan. Fuck me. Second unit Thank director. Thank you. God damn it. It's like yeah, you made, I think you, you did the same thing yeah. last time. I know, because I edited it. I'm like, I should take this out. But I didn't. Um, the, the second unit director, you can hear him shouting out like, All right, action Katara. Action rock throwers. Oh my god. That's the other thing that, like, like the... They sucked the soul yeah. out of bending yeah. in this film. And that I find unforgivable. There's a thing when... Uncle Iroh full full final bosses at the end and just like shooting out these like beams of fire. Yeah. I'm like that looked really cool. That did look cool. That's what I was gonna say. I'm wondering if it what happened first, if they were like, There's a budgeting issue, we can't do these scenes mm -hmm. like you want them. So M. Night Shyamalan was like, Okay, let's make bending more difficult in this mm -hmm. adaptation and because they have that moment where, Uncle, where they were like Uncle Iroh made fire out of nothing, and yeah. that's unheard of. So I'm wondering if that was the cause, or if hmm. he just wanted to take, you know, a twist. That could be the case, but e but even then, like, we end up with scenes where there's supposed to be, like, bending-related things happening, yeah. and there's nothing! Yeah. Like, that whole sequence in the Northern Water Tribe when Aang, it's just Aang going through motions and forms, mm -hmm. and it seems like there should be some kind of water-bending thing yeah. happening as he's doing this, and there's nothing. It's just Noah Ringer going through some Tai Chi. Yeah. It's... Yeah. And even if he's practicing, they could have just put some dialogue in there or something. something. It was so boring. So there there are two things that I forgot to mention that, that do work for me. And we, we talked about it a little bit when we were watching the movie. But, like, the sets are pretty cool. I think this, yes, this yeah. the really set, cool. Yes. Yeah, the, no, the set designers nailed so much throughout this. Like, they actually made it a really interesting visual spectacle yeah. in a lot of ways. Which, bravo, absolutely astounding work that gets lost and muddied through all this whole horrible writing the other thing that gets brought up as far as being like that was pretty good um is the score the score is mm. i think i think pretty good and it was composed by james newton howard there it is yeah james newton howard yeah absolutely amazing score he put together i have seen some arguments that it was misused i could see that yeah like whoever cut it in didn't really pay attention to like what what the scene was blah 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 i just have to pee i, I my brain is done i'm just pee i'm a pee person now i'm a water <laughs> piss <a> bender <laughs> i'm <laughs> sorry all right so do we want to take a break we before sure we get do. to uh get to, can we get to part three here yes please okay <clears throat> uh, welcome back to drazzled uh we are now going to take this amazing film and make it even better
What you got for us, Jack? What do, I get? what do I have for us? Before we start ripping this apart, I do want to acknowledge that making a movie is not easy. Uh, we know this. We've done it. We fucked up. <laughs> um, uh, like hundreds, hundreds of people have worked on this film, and not everyone came to work to get shit on because somebody did a bad thing. So I recognize work went into this. The set designer, for example. Great work. Absolutely. Now, since I've said that, we can tear it apart. <laughs> A couple of quick rules. This might screw up what you have planned, but... We oh, have... I'm absolutely breaking one oh, of our you? usual okay. rules for this, but <laughs> I, I, I think it's fair given the material, but go on. It's interesting because we were both going to break it, but in completely opposite directions. Uh, so interesting. The rules. Yeah. Okay. So we can only rec- recast two actors, no more than two. Any of the fixes that we suggest had to be available to the production at the time. So, f- you know, we had the CGI that they had the CGI. So as much as I'd like to have the giant water kaiju we can't because they couldn't i'd argue that's bullshit <laughs> we'll get to it we'll get, we'll get to, to it. we'll get to it and the, the fixed version has to maintain a similar arc which actually is not hard to do no considering, not this one. Yeah, cons- yeah. considering you know we're going off of an established season of television here yeah yeah <laughs> the entire 22 episode season all right so what i'm what i meant when i said we're going to go in different directions the two-person recasting role i was going to not recast anyone and just say it's broke too broke to fix. Uh, see, uh, so, I actually said, don't cast white people. See Netflix casting for further instructions. I mean, that fits. I would, <laughs> I'll save my effort for after you've gone through your fix. So, or after you've gone through some of this stuff here, uh, just because I recast everyone. Okay. So maybe like <laughs> as they appear in the film, you can let us know who the person is. I mean, we can do it that way. Okay. Yeah. Pew, pew, pew. Themes. I think the themes that were missing, the, f- the friendship. Right? Like, the friendship was, like, the thing I like about that show is Katara, Sokka, and Aang's friendship. Mm-hmm. And I, I'm i like, I guess you guys like each other in the film because you're all on the screen at the same time consistently. Yeah, and, like, I mean, they just are with each other because that's where the plot takes them. It's not because, you know, yeah. they have meaningful relationships. At least it doesn't feel like it. Agreed. Yeah, um, 100%. Also, children during wartime, and then a toxic family. Like, yeah. Family is toxic. Daddy Zuko. And then as far as the actual production went, uh, the one thing I, I would make sure we absolutely do, all name actors have to have no less than three weeks of martial arts boot camp. Which are like, no, Ringer. Ring? Just no Ringer. Ringer. Ringer? It's Ringer. No problem. He's got it. He did it. Yeah, he's set there. Yeah. Which actually, Deb Patel was set there as well. Oh, is he? Yeah, he's actually done martial arts his entire life as well. Okay. Uh, I didn't know At least as far as some of the material I had been reading said. But Sokka, right. Katara. Right. Katara um, in particular. Additionally, all of the people who bend in the movie will bend in the style of their... Because I, I looked at you yeah. said that each bending form element mm-hmm. is based on a form of martial arts. Yes. So just do that, please. And specifically the waterbenders, I want them to train with this. This is going to sound really weird, but the, the hand trainers that Elizabeth Olsen used for Scarlet Witch and uh, Benedict Cumberbatch used for Doctor Strange, they have finger choreographer so when they do their like magic things no one can see what I'm doing but I'm just like it's a little spider well I think you um. <laughs> <laughs> well now everyone knows exactly what you're doing <laughs> were those coaches available at in 2010 for or in 20, like 2009 2010 I don't know so initially I was going to say either everyone trains with a martial artist or with a modern dance instructor oh okay yeah I'd agree yeah I like that. But I, I want there to be intention behind their hand movements. But I feel like specifically the waterbenders, more than anybody else, have these like really intricate movements. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Anything we want to cover before we dive into fixing the story? I think I'm ready. Great. So I want to start on, and they did this a little bit in the film, I want to start on a dimly lit shoji, which is the window or door in Japanese culture that's made with like a paper, like that white paper. Yeah. I wanted to have it backlit. And then framed on either side are these banners. And the four symbols, water, air, earth, and fire, are on the two banners that are framing the water, the, the paper shoji. As the light increases behind it, we see a martial artist master, their silhouette. With the first movement of that master, we then hear Katara's monologue. And we go with the literal exact monologue from the show. Because it it's forty six seconds long, and, and it, it hits everything. It hits yeah. every point that you yeah. need. I was yeah. so confused why they didn't keep that in the original. I was right? like, it was so good. So like she's going through a monologue, 
and we're going through the different masters and like each of their movements culminates with the show of their element and then instead of i think the show it ends with the airbender being last right mm -hmm. i want to end with the firebender being last and when he uses his fire it catches the shoji and the banners on fire so oh, interesting the last thing to go up in flames is the fire symbol and then we pull back the, the screen's pretty much on fire at that point right we pull back and we see the reflection of the flames in Katara's eyes, which brings us into the world of, of what, what's her nation or what's her is the like the southern, southern, southern water tribe. Yeah, that village is on fire. So she's watching as like, I don't know if they have like huts or whatever, tents or igloos. igloos. Yeah, I guess you can't really have an is igloo on fire. Show? I think. Whatever their housing is, is on yeah. fire. Okay. We basically start in the middle of her tribe being burnt down by the Fire Nation. And Sokka comes by, grabs her, and starts running. And they're running out of town. They're fleeing town. And she's using, like, her very limited water ability, water bending ability, to, like, put out this and that. And, like, she's arguing, like, no, we can't go. And he's like, what are we going to do with the play? There's soldiers everywhere. Uh... Right. Humor. I was like, this is awful. His, uh, Sokka's chonmage, his little hair tuft. There's a little tiny flame. It's like a birthday candle, but on his head. <laughs> 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 to, to bring some like levity to this not so great thing that's happening to them. Sure. So Katara's begging uh, for Sokka to, to stop and Sokka's dragging them out of town. And she's like, we just have to wait for the moon to come out because the moon makes water powers super duper good. And Sokka's like, yeah, it's like two in the afternoon. We're not going to make it to the moon coming out. So, yeah, that, that's the initial opening. I have some more. I know it starts like way different than the show. Yeah, that's yeah, that's a that's a uh, coming in hot, uh, yeah. really heavy in intro here. So I'm wondering, is that like the timeline aspect? Mm -hmm. Like, is that taking place when they find Aang? Or is this like before it's when before. the Fire Nation first attacks? Yeah, their southern world. Yeah, we'll get okay. It, we'll get to it. Uh, um, I want to make a quick note in sure. uh, in oh. terms of recasting Katara and Sokka. I had I've recast Katara as uh, Ane Her, who I'm not. I have no idea if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but she was uh, one of the main characters in Gran Torino. Okay. And uh, Manny Jacinto is, uh, I don't think he was actually acting, prof he hadn't made his break into professional mm -hmm. acting yet at this point. Like his first role was in 2012, but he's best known at this point for playing Jason slash uh, Jean Yu in The Good Place. Okay, yeah. He's got the comedy chops and the emotional chops, I think, to do a very good Sokka. <laughs> And he would have been about the right age in okay. terms of, like, close to where uh, where Jackson Rathbone was at that point in time in age. Uh, so they're fleeing town. Um, oh, I forgot. So, like, again, Katara's, like, putting little fires out. And then the last thing she does is, like, bloop, puts that little fire out on top of Sokka's head. Excellent. And then, of course, he ends up legitimately soaked and not just pretend soaked, as he does in the movie. And he's just like, great. I'm wet now. We cut to a trio of dudes on a Fire Nation ship. The first one we see is Commander Zhao? Zhao, thank okay. you. Um, oh, we're bringing Zhao in early. Okay. Yes. And he's watching in delight as his soldiers are just, like, massacring this village. And, like, the first thing that comes out of his mouth is, like, soon the Water Nation will go the way of the Air Nomads. Um, okay. He is super evil in this. He just wants to genocide the shit out of anyone who's not in the Fire Nation. I mean, that's kind of where he's at yeah. in the show, too. Like, um, he's got a big old genocide boner for wiping out the, <laughs> the Northern Water Tribe toward the end of that season. Yeah. yeah. And, like, the justification that I have in my head, and maybe this is in the show and I just missed it, is they think the cycle's been broken with the Airbenders, right? Or the, the Avatar's resurrection cycle has been broken, possibly, because he never came back as an Airbender, right? Right. Well, like, if they had unintentionally killed the Avatar when they were wiping out the Air Nomads, water would be the uh, next uh, the next in line. Yeah. That makes sense. And then, theoretically, they'll wipe out the Water Nations, and then eventually they'll wipe out the Earth Benders. And then just more heavily monitor their own people. <laughs> Correct. Yes. Anyway, super evil. Not a nice guy. Also Whee! on the boat is Uncle Iroh, who does, like, quip, 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 basically making fun of the commander without commander catching on yeah uh, as he is wont to do yeah uh and then beside uncle is zuko who's just like pissed just pissed he's pissed okay. so 
uh, quick casting note. Uh, so this is actually your idea uh, for Iroh. Yeah. Ya Wen, who played the landlord in Kung Fu Hustle, yeah. would be an excellent, excellent Iroh. Oh yeah, for yeah, sure. just his face. Yeah, like that. <laughs> look at his look at his picture on IMDb. Um, it's just big Iroh energy. <laughs> it's yeah. so good. Uh, and then if if we were to recast away from Dev Patel for Zuko, I actually uh, pulling from Gran Torino again. I <laughs> think B Vong who I think was the main boy who interacted okay. with uh, with Clint Eastwood throughout that it's been so long fucking since movie. Seen that movie. Jesus, that movie. But he, we know that he can do sullen and moody. Okay. He would have the chops to pull off Zuko at okay. that point in time. Uh, are you keeping Commander Zhao? No, no. Zhao I recast as well. Zhao... Um, I, actually, actually, I pulled somebody from who was known for Chinese films. <laughs> Jun Hu is uh, from a film called uh, Let the Bullets Fly. Cool. I mostly chose him because of the reviews for that movie were okay. very good and he really has the look for Zhao. Just he has right. that he has kind of a sinister look to him. Um so the reason that Zhao has Uncle and Zuko on the boat is is just to rub salt in the wounds. Like that's it. It's similar to the dinner scene from the movie but like less expositiony and um, shitty and yeah. shitty. <laughs> publicly needlessly shitty I, I do like that he's like hey want to have a feast this guy sucks remember how his dad disowned him like i like that but it was just like in front of his literal entire army like yeah. come on man so we cut back to uh Sokka and katara they they're far enough away that they can take a breath um when a like a rogue fireball is heading their way and Sokka is just like i'm gonna throw my boomerang at it and katara yanks him out of the way just in time so the fireball goes past them and collides with like a wall of ice right okay and as soon as it does this awful crunching crack noise is like ice hits heat and just like Rah! and from the crack comes a tower of swirling steam and smoke which shoots right up in the air and the only person to notice it besides Katara and Sokka, obviously, is Zuko, who's on the ship, because, like, Zhao's kind of in the middle of stroking his own ego, and Uncle's too busy quippy quipping. Yeah, I kind of imagine, like, Zuko is kind of disgusted by the whole thing and turns to look the other way. Yeah, and there's just, like, a tower of steam off to the right. So he, like, he, like, shits his pants, because, like, giant air, giant air tower. Wait a minute. (laughs) Uh, So he's like, hey, Uncle, would you mind go getting our boat? And Uncle's like... Zhao, it's been like super cool. Like I'm honored and all, but we got to get back to our search for the Avatar. And Zhao's like, hmm, sure sure luck. You do. Yeah. yeah, yeah, like sure you do. We cut back to Sokka and Katara, and uh, they're both like covered in snow from the explosion. Sokka's boomerang kind of like falls limply beside him, and the the pillar of steam recedes back into the gash in the ice. And there's a moment of stillness before this like thunderous growl comes out of the dark. And Sokka, like, scrambles to his feet and, like, grabs his boomerang. And he's like, get behind me, Katara. I'll fight the monster. And then, like, as he's, like, inching his way towards the dark cavern, uh, this little bald boy comes out. And he, like, <laughs> yawns. He's like, hi, I'm Aang. <laughs> and everyone's like, wait, what? Like, uh, how the fuck? What did this? Okay. But before anybody can say anything, this, like, snow ridge melts down the middle. And Zuko steps through. Hmm. Um, oh, we're getting to a confrontation really fast here. Yeah, we have to move pretty fast. The movie. Uh, Quick casting note. Sure. Uh, so I actually borrowed a different actor from Ang from within the film, huh. Isaac Jin Solstein, who uh, actually plays an earthbending child who's supposed to basically be uh, Haru. Yeah, uh, he's like the earthbending kid that they find before they get put. It, they get taken to like the earthbending yeah. prison. Yeah, I made him. I made him Ang. Just like the liked his face. Liked his face and figured like you know he deserves a shot. Why not? Mm-hmm. Sure. Zuko steps through the the melted snow ridge. And Aang, seeing the fear on the sibling's face, goes, yip, yip. And from the cavern comes a second, like, monstrous growl before Appa erupts from the cave, sending, like, ice and snow everywhere. Flies over to Aang. Aang does a little uh, air air twirl, sends him onto the back, and just like, off you go! Then turns to Zuko, and Aang's like, you, um, you a Fire Nation soldier? And Zuko's like, dude, I'm the prince of the Fire Nation, and you're the Avatar. And then he, like, can't hide the smile on his face because he's like, nice, got him. <laughs> I forgot to, like, preface this before we jumped in the story, but you two are, are mega fans, and there's uh-huh. no way the script's going to make you happy. There's just, like, no possible <laughs> way. But before you say anything, the the way I went into this is with the mindset, like, I'm a huge comic book nerd, right? Mm-hmm. And there's just been a lot of comic book adaptations over the last 10, 15 years. There's one specific one that I'm thinking of. It's Batman Year One. It's an animated movie. Yeah. And it is like word for word pretty much the comic book. 
and it's awful. It's just so boring. Yeah, I think that's what, one of the tricky things about working in adaptation is you can never keep it 100%. Yeah. There's, there's so much that's just not going to translate between mediums. And then you have movies like uh, Captain America Civil War, which is not at all like the comic book. No. But takes like the spirit and the tone of the comic book and puts it into the movie. Yeah, that's so yeah. I can enjoy both the comic book and the movie in different ways. Sure. That's how I'm trying to think of this, okay. is keeping <laughs> all of the important themes and mm-hmm. emotions and characters, but in a new way. So I'm not going to talk as much about continuity and plot holes. As I, I figured, I'm like, I've probably destroyed whatever could possibly happen in season two and three. That's what I was saying. I was like, he doesn't know about all this yeah. stuff that happens, and so I'm just pushing that aside. I'm sure Graham Graham comes back in a big way, and I've just uttered... I've, I didn't murder her outright, but I didn't even show her. She's not even in the movie. Yeah, I was going to say, like, you just completely skipped over any interactions with anybody yeah. at the at yeah. the, the Southern Water Tribe yeah. there. I always tend to think of adaptation from like the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy standpoint, because every single time Douglas Adams uh, adapted the Hitchhiker's Guide for a new medium, it always starts the same way. Like, okay. no matter what, it always had the same beginning so you have like the same operating basis and the same kind of understanding of how things of like where some of these characters are coming from and like the overall tone of things Mm -hmm. and then after that fucking nothing is the same which i kind of like yeah there's always room to play around so i'm I'm intrigued to see where you go with Mm -hmm. this i should probably admit admit something first because that what you're describing with uh douglas adams yeah i didn't like the opening of avatar the show i get it i liked it I'm gonna hold back my opinion. On okay. That. Yeah, I actually like I had forgotten how much I liked it because yeah. like when I watched through it again, I was like, oh man, these first couple episodes are super good. Like this is a solid fucking opening. I mean, like you can tell they were still trying to figure out what the show was. Yeah. And the only thing that I have with yours is I love when Katara's the one that kind of reveals Aang from the iceberg because I was like, well, that starts their friendship and it's this whole dynamic. But this this will be our third script fix. Yeah. This is the one I like the least of the three. That we- you did mention that. Yeah. yeah. Part of that is because I had a really hard time juggling within like a two-hour movie constraint having both Aang and Katara as leads because in the show it's really well balanced like they do a really good job balancing the ensemble they also have 20 episodes of story to do that with (laughs) frankly like Katara would have been an easier write like her journey is easier to write than Aang's because Aang has room to grow but not as much as Katara she starts as kind of just like not weaker sister but like less confident uh she's not as confident in her like abilities she, her brother is a sexist douchebag to an extent at first at first yeah, like, right, like, right, right, he's directly right, right, called right. out for sexism in episode one yeah. so like yeah it's there yeah. yeah like they grow so much in the first season mm-hmm. Aang yeah. grows a little bit i think the thing i think i think it's that uh that like Sokka and katara have way more grounded Mm-hmm. growth that they that they can experience in yeah. season one and ang's overall journey is much loftier and more philosophically driven yep. i think and that mm-hmm. and that and also has such high stakes behind it because yep. he immediately tasked with oh you have to end this hundred year war yeah there's a reason that his arc takes way longer to develop i agree shrinking that down into two hours mm-hmm. I think that's why I dislike this script. Well, I don't dislike it, but like of the three that I've written, this is the one I'm like. Let's continue. Right, 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 right. Let's continue on and see where you go. With it. But but essentially, what I'm saying is, Katara totally gets like the short end of the stick. I in mean, this like, draft. I do want to say it. It would be easier. I, I feel like the show does such a good job balancing. There's not really one main character. Like mm-hmm. I mean, it is Aang in the like, M Night Shyamalan movie, and like throughout the show, it's Aang. But yeah. like you can easily make one or the other a main character and just have Aang's plot be like the driving plot. Yeah. So we go from Aang being captured, heavy finger quotes, being captured by Zuko to straight into Zuko's ship where Uncle's like, he doesn't um, doesn't really look like an avatar. And Zuko explains that the avatar would be an airbender and this kid is an airbender, thus probably an avatar. Uh, Uncle says that his father will be pleased and how good it'll be to finally be allowed to go back to the Fire Kingdom. Which like, I was trying to find a justification, like why would Aang go with them? Because like the, the water tribe's already gone right and you've um, kind of you've kind of like <laughs> taken his protective instinct yeah. out for that he displays in the uh in the show what i have him there for is like milk the conversation for like information the fire nation is still in charge or is, is at war they're a bunch of douchebags got it got it got it um and we also learn like they have conquered 80 percent of is it called earth in the show as it takes place on our they just say like the world yeah okay. yeah they don't ever actually say earth or like name the planet ang would be so confused as to what is happening yeah He'd be like i this it's only been like a couple days i've been gone what's going on yeah and that's why i kind of like to sit there and like uncle yeah and, 
but like once he gets that and he, he like asks for clarification he's like so you can't go home unless i go with you and zuko's like Rrr, like scowls and ang's like i yeah i guess that's probably true then huh and you get this moment where like ang feels for zuko like, I wanted to establish that really early. Ah, okay. We cut back to Katara and Sokka bickering on the back of Appa. And Katara's like, we need to go back and help this kid. And Sokka's like, I told Dad I was going to protect you. And that would be a really bad idea to go back there. But before either of them went out on the other one, we hear a, a ruckus below. Because, like, Katara wanted to go back. Sokka didn't. But, like, Appa's like, I got my own agenda. <laughs> Fuck y'all. I'm going to go back and help my boy Aang. So he's, like, right above the ship. And I want to have Aang destroy this ship, right? Not intentionally, just like air bubble, air bubble, air bubble. It's just like blowing, like making a Swiss cheese. Um, <laughs> and he's absolutely on his little air ball zipping around, which I missed from the, the movie so much. Yeah, it's one of the coolest things he does. And he's laughing like a dingus, which like in the movie, <laughs> he doesn't laugh, I don't think. No, he doesn't laugh once in the movie. I don't, I don't think, think anyone laughs no. in the movie. Yeah. They're all just like... yeah. So he's like zipping away and then Appa swoops down, they grab Aang and Aang yells back to Zuko. He's like, I'm really sorry. I got to go do Avatar shit, but I really hope you're allowed to go back to go home anyway. And the the three of them kind of agree like, okay, we'll travel together. We're going to go find our dad because our tribe's gone now. And Aang's like, cool. I mean, we're both going the same way. I'm going to go find Master Gyatsu. Oh, and Sokka's like, hmm, about that. And Katara's like, nope. She's kind of like giving the old elbow. Like, yeah. We're gonna, she's, we're gonna... So she jumps, she mm. jumps right into like, no, we, we can't break that news no, no, to him. No, <laughs> The guy's been awake for an hour and a half. We're not going to tell him that his, <laughs> his entire people have been genocided. So with, with their shipping just like fucked up, Commander Zhao is like, hey man, I'll haul your ship. My people will fix it up. I'm, I'm headed to the North Pole to like genocide these water people. But he uses this again to like get uh, information out of Zuko. And he he wants to know like, so why did you fuck off real quick there? Because that was seem a little, little, little fishy there. So we, we get that he intends to lie about the, the waterbenders. Um, and then over a feast, Zhao asks Zuko why they ran off. He gets the information that, like, oh, they went after the Avatar. He's able to, like, put one and one, uh, one, and one two and two, 16 together. Um, <laughs> and then once he does, he tries to push Zuko to attack him. Because if Zuko attacks Zhao, Zhao, he believes he can wipe out Zuko. Right. And thus, like, getting rid of him as a pest altogether. So al almost like a twist on, like, the Agni Kai between them. Yeah. Okay. But Uncle's like, no, <laughs> don't do that. So that whole chunk's like the first act, okay. uh, pretty much. From there, we cut to the gang as they're like flying away from the, uh, let me know if I'm saying this right, Kyoshi? Mm -hmm. Kyoshi, yeah. They're like, bye. Like waved by the Kyoshi warriors because I wanted to include that part, but I can't. There's not enough time. So like Sokka still has a makeup on. He's like grouchy. And Katara and Anger are like, that was really fun. We had a really good time with those guys. And Anger's uh, Sokka like, like wiping his face off. Um, and what I wanted to show here is Aang's like, oh, you had fun with those people? Let's go side quest over here or over here. I got this buddy named Zo Boomy that you, you should meet. And Katara's like, I know what you're doing. Like, you're, you're putting off going home. And she's like, I'm, I'm with you, buddy. Like, we'll, we'll go deal with this together. Like, I know it's, it's going to suck. But hmm. so they, they arrive at the temple and Sokka kind of incorporating the episode where they find the waterbender boats slash that one dude that was left behind. Bato. Yeah. Yeah. So they he pretty much like immediately finds like remnants of a waterbender. The waterbenders were there. And he's like, oh, great. Like we can go this way and we'll go meet dad. And Aang's like, I'm going to go over to the air temple and find Gy Gyatsu. So they like go off that way. And Katara's like, I'm going to go with Aang. <laughs> I'll be back. Mm -hmm. and Sokka's like, cool, I'll go find uh, lunch. So, Faith, you looked like you wanted to say something as I was destroying the plot of Avatar The Last Well, Run. I was thinking, okay, so I have... First, I like what you did with the dialogue and how we get those little bits from the show through the dialogue, like mm -hmm. Kyoshi, and Sokka's like, yeah, I got beat up by a girl, but they were actually really powerful women. Yeah. You know, so we get that, but I was confused. So when they're attacking the Southern Water Tribe, have all the men left, like Katara's dad, yeah. and they're just destroying everything. Grand Grand is just gone. <laughs> like, but did, like, Katara and Sokka watching the Fire Nation, like, destroy their... Is that going to be another thing that happened? So one of the justifications that M. Night Shyamalan had for the movie not doing well was that he, he could either choose to make the movie PG or he could make it for adults. Um, he specifically was like, well, I could have made a version with Megan Fox, blah, 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 blah. Right. He was kind of like ragging on Ninja Turtles a yeah. little bit. Yeah. 
Um, and like you can kind of like balance that, but and that's what I wanted to do here is yeah. like you have this really awful like kind of like the show does like there was a genocide. We don't focus on it in a way that would get us like a PG thirteen or R rating, but it is like the truth of what's going on. So I wanted to have like oh we see the village on fire. We focus less on like the screams and melting faces of people and more on like the the leads fear. Um, so like in this I don't show Graham Graham. Mm-hmm. Did she make it? Maybe. Did she not? Maybe. Did she exist at all? Maybe. Like, if it needs to be brought up in a sequel, which, like, I, yeah. I went into this thinking, like, there is no sequel. Oh. Do I leave room for one? Sure. Do I leave it open like the previous movie did? No. Hmm. Um, okay. But, like, Graham Graham is never brought up. So, like, if she showed up at the beginning of the second movie, like, I brought you, uh, I forgot what they eat, the, like, gross puffs. Like, fish, they jerky? Fish jerky puffs or something? I don't know. Whatever, uh, whatever this, they... The the, uh, the Water Tribe food that I think we get introduced to, it was uh, stewed sea prunes. Oh, that's yes. right, with Batu. She's yeah. got, like, a bucket of st- stewed sea prunes. And they're like, oh, gram, gram. Um, so uh, maybe she was off, like, ice fishing at the time. Yeah, and... well, I mean, like, that could work, because then Katara and Sokka are like, we watched our hometown burn down, yeah. and I'm all for Zhao being, like, more evil. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That is, like, yeah. So do you have any concerns with where it's going right now? I mean... Again, I'm pushing all continuity, like, in the TV show aside. Right, right. So it's... So far, it's in ter- okay. Yeah, in terms of, like, seeding things for 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 a sequel, yeah. I am I have issues with kind of glossing over the Kyoshi Warriors in particular, just because yeah. they are... Like, Suki in particular is such an important character in terms of her relationship to Sokka okay. and uh, and how she factors into the story later on. We kind of talked about this last night, how when they were making the Harry Potter films, they were still... The books were still being written. Right. So when, when the director's like, oh, we don't need this sub-character or whatever, mm-hmm. the author of Harry Potter would say, like, oh, you want to keep that person around because they're going to become really important in book five or whatever true but at this point i'm pretty sure at the point that this that this movie was being made uh-huh. the series was done yeah so because mm. this came out in 2010 right Correct. yeah yeah so the show ended in 2008 we just found out okay yeah yeah, yeah. um well i mean you can even just have like <laughs> suki waving so like we see yeah the, that, and the, that's that she what i want cast. is like they're yeah. all like hi or bye because and... i get it it's hard Time. Yeah, and like I already include one montage to cram a bunch of shit. I didn't want to have like three montages to cover all this stuff. Um, so I was like, they seem important slash cool. I'll have them in the background. Have a nod to them yeah. there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So where did I leave off? They were splitting up. Yeah. Aang takes Katara through basically like a little memory walk. Like, hey, I did this over there. Hey, I did that over there. Until they get to the mass grave. And he he goes into, like, the Avatar state, right? Yeah. And when he does, wind starts, like, whipping around him, and it starts picking up debris and bone and rock, and it, it creates, like, a really dangerous kind of, like, whirlwind around him. And Katara, at risk of herself, tries to push through to get to Aang. And we cut to the spirit world, where Aang receives instruction from Roku's dragon to meet Roku at the temple of the moon slash ocean spirit during the winter solstice, which I realized I just did like, Ooh, yeah, you just, you truncated some stuff hard there, Yeah, but I don't, I actually, I don't hate it. I don't hate it. Okay. I, I was like, how do I take all these little things and like put it in a blender and then dump it out? And I'm like, <laughs> they're going to hate it. But I, I wanted there also to be like more reason for them to push towards. The... Yeah. To, toward the Northern water tribe. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're, you're getting them there way faster. Yes. Yeah. Where so in the in the real world, like Katara is like shaking Aang, the debris is still swirling around them, and she's like, "It's okay, like you don't have to run from your grief, like you like stay in this moment, and like I'm with you." And like as she's talking to him, a rock like sort of like knocks her in the head in kind of a mirror version of when Aang is learning how to use fire and burns and her hands. Burns her hands, yeah. So she gets wanged with a rock instead. Yes. Okay, which is like she's knocked unconscious, and that's when Sokka comes over, arrives back on the scene because he was off hunting for, for lunch. I don't know if I mentioned that. So was he off to, wait, I'm, I'm a little confused sure. there because was he off to go find lunch or was he off to go try to find their dad? He finds the boat. He finds like remnants of the waterbenders. Okay. And he's like, great, cool, cool, cool. We're going to separate after this. Aang, you're going to stay here and do whatever you are doing with Master Gyatsu. We're going to go off and try to find your dad. But first, lunch. I thought ah. Sokka was the one who was like, Oh, but Aang, actually, and then Katara was like, nudge, nudge, that's not... Right. So, yeah. okay. So um, the thing is, now that time has passed, Katara is more... Katara's like, I'm going to go with him, because when oh, he does okay. find out, it's going to be not so good. 
And he's like, cool, cool, cool. I'm going to go find lunch. Yep. Maybe, maybe it's more like Sokka is pushing, like, no, he really does need to know. Yeah, and I she's like, that. okay, fine, yeah. but I'm not letting him do it alone. Yeah, I could see that. I had a little bit of trouble writing the Sokka Aang relationship just because time. Sure. And also, like, it is a little ambiguous. At least I thought it was a little ambiguous through the first couple episodes of the season, like, how Sokka feels about Aang. Yeah, I think that's fair to say. There's definitely some wariness or hot, even bordering on hostility yeah. in a couple of scenes. I'm getting to that, actually, right now. So he comes back and he sees Katara laid Unconscious, out. yeah. Yeah. He starts freaking out, which brings ang back like his screams and Sokka hmm. yells at ang he's like call, basically calling him a little kid with a box of matches like you are not mature enough for the amount of power that you have and surprisingly ang agrees with him like seeing what he's done to guitar he's like you're right uh, i'm too dangerous to be around right now so he says goodbye to like Sokka, who takes katara and leaves on the boat that they found this is where we kind of jump back to the the movie where ang ang is like okay i'm gonna go try to learn what i can from the library. In my version, the air nomads are kind of scholars, almost. So they have, like, a library full of sc scrolls. Okay. So he's like, cool, cool, cool. I'm going to go down to the library, which he's led there by, like, an old man. This is the one character. I'm like, I don't know how the fuck I'm going to wedge this in there. Like, why is the old man there? I don't know. He just likes to hang out on this island by himself near the library. But, like, the reason I included him is because I specifically wanted him to be the proxy for the old man in the show who blames Aang for running away. Oh, the fisherman. Oh, the fisherman. Him, okay. Yeah. Yeah. In the movie, uh, he's like, I just needed some money. Whereas in this, he's like, fuck you. You're the Avatar? Fuck you. Here's the Fire Nation. Oh, so he's just like outright like, no, where the fuck have you been for yeah. so long? You yeah. deserve this. Yeah. Got a little bit ahead of myself. Um, So like when he's let into the trap, when he's let into the trap and the Fire Nation starts to like try to capture him and tries to fight them off. And that's when the fisherman, not fisherman, is like, you know what? Like, fuck you. Now you're going to do the thing? Like, fuck you. And Aang's like, oh, I did run away, didn't I? And he just kind of like lets himself get captured. Hmm. And before we leave that scene, Zhao's like, I wonder if there's any scrolls here on like how to fight waterbenders. Do, 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 uh, so we're establishing a library where he's able to come in and find the information about the moon spirit. Correct. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Before it was like exposition. Oh no, did I destroy continuity again? Because I'm getting that. When look. you first said a library, I'm like, there is a library in season two, and it is one of my favorite episodes. I, because I just it watched is that today. So cool, yeah. and the voice actor is also is just a voice actor that I love. He's in the Princess Diaries. Um, <laughs> sorry, but it, so you, sure. <laughs> well, I think I think. Considering what you know about the series uh -huh. and like mm -hmm. what you know from and the the fact that we do know from the film that yeah. like Zhao learned about this from a library, yeah. it's this is a better way to handle it than just having him say like, Oh, I found a library, yada yeah. yada and like just kind of you know, expositioning yeah. the you know, the shit out of it. It's nice I like that you've incorporated an actual real location yeah. for him yeah. to find this shit. I wanted him to even in the cartoon, it still felt like an exposition when he's like, Oh yeah, I know this because I do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah he, yeah, he doesn't reveal it until, like, right before they're about to do it. Well, yeah. on the show, it's great, because he sets it up for season two, when they find the library, gotcha. and they find out what happened, and just everything. <sighs> but it, so like you said, you didn't want to set this up for a sequel. Right. So that makes sense. Yeah. Cool. So he, he finds the thing, and he's like, ha ha, twirls his mustache and fucks <laughs> off. Um, actually, this will oh, really... Zhao ja has a mustache in this one? <laughs> He specifically has a Fu Manchu, so he has to like oh, reach God. down Gosh. and bring no. it up and twist it. I'm kidding. He, there's no Fu Manchu. That's awful. <laughs> just, um, so so, so this will really like, Jesus upset Christ, you. Dude. So after he finds a scroll, he has his soldiers burn the library. Oh, yeah. which would really upset what's going on in season two. But like, uh, but be, uh, but um, but like within the evil character I don't that I've spoil it for you, so. built up, I I'm like only an evil monster would burn a library. Yeah. No. I. I Oh, like it, it hurts. Yeah, but it hurts so good. It fits. Yeah, it yeah. Makes sense. <laughs> you. Mm. So Katara wakes up from being unconscious, and she is pissed. She's like, "Sokka, the fuck? Aang is going through some shit. We need to go back there." And he's like, "Because he freaked out, you got hurt. I'm protecting you." And she's like, "I don't need you to protect me. I will never forgive myself for fleeing from our village." I'm not going to flee now. Yes, I want to see dad, but I'm not leaving our friend, you know, 
off to be miserable and whatever. I think that fits character-wise for Katara mm -hmm. quite a bit, just because, A, it's her standing up for herself mm -hmm. against her brother's assumption that she needs to be protected, and B, it's her um, it, it's her leaning into her belief that the Avatar still exists and her, and her wanting to do everything she can to support him and help yeah. him become everything that he needs to be. Yeah, one of the things I admired about Katara was, like, in the show, she's one of my favorite characters because she she steps out of her shell and you watch her grow with confidence, not only as a waterbender, but, like, as the... She kind of takes on the motherly figure mm -hmm. since her, you know, what happened to her mom and it's a whole thing. But, like, yeah, that makes sense. And also the guilt that Aang feels is something that I really missed. <laughs> so it's good yeah. that it's in here. Yeah, no, because I really, that was huge. I, I really like that you've keyed in on those details. So the way that she gets back to the island, the lunch that was captured is Momo. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to ask. I was about to ask, where's Momo? <laughs> um, which she like opens the That's, satchel. And there's Momo. <laughs> he, he starts flying back to the island and <laughs> he's like, follow that flying lemur. Uh, which they do, and Soka is just kind of like, not only lamenting the loss of his purpose, but also his lunch. Did you just say Soka? Did I? Yeah. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, so, I what, caught that. <laughs> wait, wait, whatever, so... whatever episode we do next is going to have, like, plain old American names. Dave <laughs> and Stan and Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> Stan. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yes, Jami and Stan and... No. <laughs> None of these Sokas and Jails. <laughs> Dave. <laughs> Dave. Dave. Dave Patterson. Uh, Oddly enough, I'm played by Dave Patel. Or da by da damn it, Dev Patel. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. Oh my god. Okay, so they're headed back to the island. We then cut to basically we do, we do like what the the show did with man. Now all my my pronunciations are just like boned. I've forgotten everything. Zoka, Zuka. Oh no. Zuko? Zaku. Zuka. <laughs> Zazu. Z Zazu. <laughs> Zuko. Thank you. Zuko in like. I thought that was a bit. <laughs> no. My brain got completely burnt. Zuko ha, in like blue. Fire. Fire. Ah. Ha, 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 ha. So as a blue spirit, uh, <laughs> where he like sneaks into the camp and goes to free Aang. Like, I love that episode. So much. It's one of the most crucial moments of the entire se mm -hmm. season. Series, yeah, yeah. arguably. Yep. If the emotion was behind the action, then the movie didn't do a terrible job with it. No, yeah. I'd agree with that. Um, I actually like that the arrow hits the mask and splits it and we see Zuko. Mm -hmm. It's a really short way to have Zhao be like, oh, instead of saying like, he goes to the thing and he sees the mask and la 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 la, which is great in the show when you have 22 episodes, but in the movie, it's like, we need to get to that way mm -hmm. quicker. So he like, he, he's like, ha ha, him, I know him, damn it. Then we have, we have almost the exact same conversation with Zuko and Aang. Oh, I skipped a part. So like they get away. Aang takes Zuko's body. He's, he's like all fucked up from the arrow mask. Thing. Sure. Yeah. So that uh, plays out essentially as you would expect it to play out. Yeah. We cut back to Katara and Sokka. There it is. Who basically arrived to see like a really deflated Appa just like. <laughs> and like, do you want to go find Aang and Appa? Like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so like everybody climbs onto Appa's back and like yip yips away. Because in this, like, Appa just, like, nose rang is all the time. I don't, I didn't have, like, a very... He's got a, he's got a sixth sense. He can just yes, smell yeah. the kid. He, he's, <laughs> Aang has a particular I, smell. I, it's like lavender. I said Ooh. he has a sixth sense. Oh, God damn it. <sighs> you did it. I'll see myself out. Okay. Now introducing new permanent host, Bushy the Cat. <laughs> you thought I was going to say Faith? Absolutely Ow. not. Anyway, uh, <laughs> then we cut back to the scene that we all wanted with... Uh, Zuko, Zuko, and Ang having conversation like, "Yo, we don't need to be friends, or we don't need to be enemies." And Zuko is like, "Fuck you." That's it. I mean, that's yeah. the scene. That's yeah, the scene. It, yeah, it's, it's, yeah. Because in the show, it's Ang like opening up to him about one of his best friends growing up and how he yeah, was a oh, member yeah, yeah, of the Fire yeah. Nation yeah. and how he's openly humanizing people from what what is now a totalitarian fascist regime trying to take over the world. He he's openly acknowledging that like good people have come from this place and poses the question could we be friends yeah if it weren't for what's happening 
So Zuko attacks, and that's... And Aang, Aang spider monkeys away in the trees. Yeah, and it pretty much, like, runs right into the gang. Okay. They're like, we're all sorry, we're all sorry, we did the things, we're all humans, but we're we're friends, and we're not going ahead from this point because we're all going in the same direction. I mean, they are still, but also because, like, we friends and we like each other. The power of friendship. The power of friendship. Kingdom Hearts once said. Is it... <laughs> Uh, so Act 2 ends with Zuko arriving back at the ship, and Uncle's like, where you been? And Zuko's like, not, not now. I'm not I'm, in the fucking mood. I'm not in the mood. And Uncle's like, okay, well, I'm going to go into town and find some, like, Mahjong pieces that I... Paizo. Is it Paizo? It has to be Paizo. Yeah. It has to be Paizo. It has to be Paizo, and it has to be the White Lotus tile. He's style. looking for his White Lotus tile. Yeah, Thank you. Place it. I wanted to get, like, these little bits from the show. Like, yeah. For the well, that, again, that's foreshadowing for future seasons, oh, the, but... The, that, the, the, yeah. the bullshit Paizo tile is way more important than really? you have any yeah. concept no, for. No, I'm... Yeah. So I, silly. I, oh, you have to I, just... I, you're, you're gonna, you, in particular, are going to love what happens with that's that, That's what I'm... Like, just... I the, love Uncle yeah. so much, and I'm upset that I couldn't put more of him in this. Iro rules. Iro fucking rules. Uh, there is one episode that just focuses on all of the side characters, and Iro oh, it's it's bad. voted, I think, one of the fan favorite really? best episodes of the show. Is it the is it the season with, two episode that I'm thinking of? The yeah, Tales of Bossing Say, yes, yeah, parts one and two, and then there's mm-hmm. a scene with Iro, and it's just incredible. Nerds. Uh, so he goes to get the Pajo. Pajo. Mm-hmm replacement. Oh, I had a question. And then as soon as he does, the ship gets blown to smithereens. Aha. Yeah. And then we, we cut to the gang. But go, go ahead with your question. Were you in mind making mm-hmm. this as a show for people who have, making this movie for people who have watched the show or for newcomers or both? Because... B- both. I wanted to split the difference. Yeah, I, I felt I felt like you were trying to go for both there. Okay. Um, have it different enough that the people who've seen the show can enjoy it as a new product, but also somebody who's never seen the show can watch it and not have it just be wall-to-wall exposition. Yeah. yeah. So we then cut to the gang, and we do full-on training montage. Uh, ah, okay. Yes. And every new location they go to, there's the cabbage monger. And every time they go to train, his cabbages get fucked up. Who I have recast <laughs> as Asif Mondvi, because he should be playing a role <laughs> like that. <laughs> yeah, no, I, yeah. I think that's a really good... Oh. I miss the cabbage monger in the movie. The ca- his, his cabbages. He's <laughs> like he's such it's such a stupid bit thing, yeah. but it's one of those fun, effective, like I don't know, running gags that's just objectively enjoyable. Yeah, so, and like, that's that's why I asked if you were doing it for like fans or newcomers because the pie show thing that's a nod to the fans. The cabbages yeah. that's a nod to the fans because it's like things that both can enjoy. Anyone can enjoy the cabbage oh, monger. Yeah. yeah. And like having Uncle go off to find a piece, he's like, I misplaced a piece of my not mahjong. Like that's funny <laughs> to <laughs> And like as as we're seeing the montage, as montage do, we see Aang and Katara like growing stronger in their abilities, but also like we're friends and having fun and like Sokka is of course like the perpetual joke of all of this. Yeah. So like by the time they eventually do at the end of the m- montage end up at the northern water bender tribe. Yes. Sokka's just like, I'm so fucking over this. Which is when he sees... He sees UA. UA. And he's like, well, <laughs> now this is a journey I can get into. I forgot to recast UA. That's fine. I actually didn't think the actress did a, ter- a terrible job. Just the hairstylist. Just yeah. the hairstylist. Hmm. Unfortunate. <laughs> so well, this is the hairstylist or the cameraman at that point? Because <laughs> yeah. just kind of the yeah. angle. Like, it's not even, yeah, like, when you're styling hair, I can't imagine you're thinking too much about the back of it. Like, maybe you, I don't know, I, you see my hair. I mean, <laughs> I'm, no I mean, my mom's a hair, my mom's a hairstylist, so okay. she's been, she's been licensed to do that for my entire life. So, I, you do think about that kind of oh, thing okay. when you're cutting it, just. So the hairstylist made it, whoopsie. That's what I'm maybe, hearing. maybe the hairstylist has, just like, a vindictive streak and, like, hates the aristocracy <laughs> like or something. So t- and so yeah, wants, that's it. Wants the princess to look like a dick. So it's meta. Like maybe both in universe and in real life, the hairstylists of Princess Yue was like, "Fuck the aristocracy!" Yes. It was like, "You dick hair." <laughs> uh, for those who don't understand any of what's being said, there's a particular shot within the movie where this is like the first the time angle, you see her. The first time you see Princess Yue, it looks like a big old wiener. Yep. Um, and as much as I want to say that Belinda, my partner, was the first person to notice it, no, the internet existed. So. <laughs> Uh, everyone was immediately like, well, that's a penis. Anyway. (laughs) 
Excellent. Um, so the the movie plays out from here very similarly to the show, as much as possibly can fit, as much as I want there to be the love triangle between Sokka and Yue and her betrothed person. Whatever. I, yeah, that dickhead. Yeah. I, yeah. There's just not enough time. He doesn't need, like, he doesn't even need to be in it. He could just, she could just say, I'm betrothed. Just, yeah, just acknowledging wrong. that she is, like, she has an arranged marriage what I, set is yeah, enough. Yeah, because that necklace there, comes back and is important for Katara, because yep. that's Katara's oh, mom's yeah, necklace. Yeah, yeah. And Paku's like, oh, Connor. I made this for your grandmother. <laughs> um, <laughs> Who may or may not exist in this universe. But. Yeah. The, what, I, what I did instead was she feels... So she is responsible to her people. She can't, like, go and hang out and, like, have dates. Ah, okay, so it's more she has a, a strict, like, stately schedule yeah. she has to keep with her and responsibilities. She knows that if anything should ever happen to the ocean, or the moon, the moon spirit, spirit, she would have to forgo her existence. Oh, so she already knows She that. already knows. Okay. Yeah. So she's like, I don't want to start living my life in case something should happen. Okay, so it's that's like way, an way interesting sadder, take. But, um, it is way sadder, but it does... Uh, it, it does a hell of a better job than the film does of, like, establishing that relationship and why we should feel anything about it. Yeah. Yeah, like, I think it fits. She wants to hang out with Sokka because he's funny and... He's Sokka. Yeah. He's Sokka. I, by the end of the, seri- the season, I was like, I really like this dude. Uh, especially yeah. that with his relationship with Yui. I was like, oh man. They did I think they so did a really sad. they did a really good job of handling that. And I think especially since like they had the time to develop that like her betrothed is an asshole and mm-hmm. does not care about her and she does not even like him. Yeah. Like it helps hit home a little bit more like why they develop an intense connection very quickly. Yeah. Because if you're already stuck in a situation that is like that you fucking hate the minute you find somebody that you actually yeah. click with is to be like, Oh, that's what that, that's what happiness feels like. It's mm-hmm. a, a kid's show, huh? Kid's Oof. show. Woo! I'm like reading so much. I was just like, Oh, but that would be so cool. Cause then she has this duty to her people and Aang will also kind of feel that because he's yeah. the avatar. He has, and I'm like, already spinning into how the characters relate to one another. Your yeah. fan fiction's gonna be just like, wow, well, so good. I t- yep. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna keep it at that. <laughs> Zuko. Zuko. My he's, boy. He, my boy. He survived, obviously, because he's like, I'm a I'm a I'm a firebender. You tried to blow me up with fire. Fuck you. you, you I'm like a phoenix. You're like fucking a, hubris. Uh yeah, like you thought you were gonna blow me up with the fire that is me. Anyway, so he he puts the he has fixed the demon mask. And I wanted him, and I know, I know that their nations I, I was living under the assumption that the the entire Fire Nation was meant to be Chinese. Um, right, like, yeah, we, how we we kind of touched on how it's like, like they're kind of like every nation is kind of an amalgam of different cultures. Yeah. So yeah. There's not like one a one to one correlation between any of them. I don't think. So initially, I was concerned to do this, but I want him to have fixed his mask um, using the uh, kintsugi. Mo- I, I knew you were gonna say yeah, that. yeah. So it's got which, like which this is Japanese gold going through mm-hmm. it. So it's fixed, but it has a gold where the crack was, which is Japanese, not Chinese. But right. now it doesn't matter. It's Fire Nation. It's Fire Nation. So he and his uncle do have that moment where he's like, I don't want you to go, but I know you have to do this. And he goes off to do his thing, and uncle goes to hang out with Zhao, more or less to keep an eye on him than to actually, like, offer advice. Right. I mean, that's kind, of, that's, that's kind of the point. Like, yeah. That's more like the subterfuge reason that he's doing what he does anyway in the show. Yeah. Like, in the movie, it's less um, of course it is. Yeah, that scene in the movie. If you didn't see the show, you'd have no idea. Like, it was so confusing. Why Zuko just showed up and was like, hey, I'm yeah. here on this boat. Yeah. So Zhao shares the scroll with Uncle that he had found earlier. And Uncle's like, you can't do that. Yeah, he immediately starts to lose like... his shit because Iroh's deeply connected <laughs> to the spirits. But we start to understand, like, oh, the patron spirit of the moon is in that village somewhere. And he's he's like, cool, cool, cool. My army's going to attack, but like, I'm going to go kill a fish, which he does not say in that manner. So Sokka is on like this like adorable cutesy date with Yue. Uh, meanwhile, Katara, who like feels really guilty about abandoning her village, has been like getting ready to. It's kind of that moment in the movie where it's like everybody's getting to their battle stations when the fleet arrives, and Aang. None, no one's worried though because they have Aang, and Aang's like, "You're all relying on me, huh? I'm twelve. I'm one kid. I'm yeah. one kid, and I'm yeah. twelve, and that is a fleet. That is a fleet I'm of ships. Is is Paku in this? Like, is he being trained in waterbending or anything? Um, I didn't put him in there just because of time. Yeah. Um, 
And because, like, what I would want to see of him, there definitely wouldn't be a time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think the ending suffers specifically because, like, if you don't have Paku, then there's no reason to show Katara becoming the new trainer of yeah. Aang. Yeah. Which, uh, that's why I said, like, this script kind of does Katara dirty. Anyway, so he's like, I'm feeling very nervous about this. And it's about to be the solstice, so let's go down to that place I was told to go to by Roku Dragon. And Katara's like, well, okay, I'm going to guard you while you are in the spirit world, as you do in the show. Sure. So solstice begins, blah, 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 while Aang is dealing with both Roku and, is it Ko? Oh, Ko, you're, you're including Ko the I'm, face dealer? I'm including him specifically because in this, he is a metaphor for the embodiment of Aang's self-doubt. I love it. I yes. fucking yes. love it. Yes. As that, long as he's in it. Yeah, like, I, I uh, that was one of the things. Is, uh, like, as I was doing my watch through, I was thinking, like, okay, what is like critical that would need to be included mm-hmm. here? Mm-hmm. And his forays into the spirit world, his commuting with Avatar Roku, who I've cast as Chow Yun Fat, by the way. Oh, nice. Yeah. Okay. And Ko the Face Stealer in particular, mm-hmm. so fucking important. Like that establishes so much about like the Avatar's history mm-hmm. and the and what Aang needs to do moving forward. Um, I didn't know any of that, so I just thought he looked cool. I was going to say, he's just fucking cool. He looks like, cool. He, was, he, was, <laughs> he does look cool as shit. terrifying. Because yeah. yeah. I remember watching that as a kid, and I was like, oh my gosh, this is so scary. And I like, yeah. when I watched it, I tried to keep my face like as still as possible, because I was like, Because oh. that's, that's yeah. going to take my face. Yeah. Oh, so was... in the show, for those who don't know, would you want to explain? Yeah, so he was in the spirit world. He, if Anyone who approached him showed any emotion, he would steal their face. And throughout the sequence where he's talking to Aang, he just switches faces. And he said, I took the face of one of the, like, love interests of a previous Avatar. And he, like, shows the face. And it, Aang has, like, this moment. If I'm not mistaken, it's the Avatar um, from the water yes. cycle before Kyoshi, yes. oh, okay. I think, yeah. is who it was. Because they, I think they said it was, like, 800 years ago or something. And timeline-wise, that's about where that would be, I think. He looks cool. Or it looks cool. It, it's one of those moments where I, I could see like a YouTube list of like ten moments from kids shows that terrified them forever. Yeah, yeah. Co the face stealer. Yeah, mm-hmm. immediately. And I was like, what a what a perfect um, metaphor for like Aang's self doubt. Yeah, yeah. So that's happening while like everything kind of collides around the koi pond in the show. Yep. And in the movie, but it was not good. Um, it's way less effective in the movie. But and the set for that. Sorry, like I know the sets were great, but yeah. the set for that was yeah. a mess. Yeah, yeah, the set. That's like the one shortcoming. That was I think the they only had. one that yeah. I was like. But that's such a that's such a gorgeous little yeah. oasis in the show. Like for the, it really did kind of pale in comparison. So Zhao kills the Moon Spirit. Uncle kicks his ass. Yue sacrifices herself. Like pretty much all the stuff that happens in the show happens in the movie. Yeah. Um, Sokka gets sad. Sokka gets sad. Sokka, there, I do want to have a moment where like Sokka's like, I can't protect you. Like I can't protect yeah. you either. Yeah. 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 Um, Shit. Now, are we going? Do we have enough in the budget for UA to come back as like CGI and she gives him a little kiss and then she fades? Little ghost, ki- <laughs> like, like little, little ghost the, kiss. Like they do in the show. I think so. I think that would be doable. I'm trying to think if there's any like precedence for for like 2010. Yeah, it just won't look good. Yeah. they'll do it. It, it you can tell it is a woman you can't tell it's the same actress i'm picturing like yeah um because there's a moment I, in I, sleepy I, hollow from 1999 where you're supposed to see like the faces of the families that were murdered yeah. in the flames i'm like yeah they did it didn't look like the family but you could tell it was a human person i mean i just want to point out in ghostbusters dan Aykroyd gets a ghost blow job so like i think we could pull this off <laughs> that you... was a long time before this so <laughs> that was what 1984 was their first ghostbusters was it I thought 88 jumps out in my brain for some reason. That's not important. It's, I also thought 88. I just, let's, let's I, completely I just, I just side. wanted to, I, I just wanted to point out that that was a thing. Cause nobody should ever forget that Dan Aykroyd, uh, came up with the entirety idea of Ghostbusters because of that thing. That was, that was the, the impetus. That was the impetus for like the whole thing basically was I had a dream about getting a blowjob from a ghost and we are now two hours and are. 25 minutes in before blowjobs from Ghost Cup brought up. Just want to throw it's, that out this there. This is a relevant segue. We, I swear. Um, you're absolutely right. Like in Ghostbusters, there's a dream sequence slash montage that takes mm-hmm. place not, Specifically, he's on a pirate boat. He's on a pirate ship. He's a pirate captain. Yeah. Which does I not fit do in not the universe. I do not remember Ghostbusters. So. <laughs> so. Th- this part, like, I read that and I had to go back and watch. I'm like, oh, the set is definitely a pirate ship 
But if you don't know that, you're just like, oh, Dan Aykroyd's in bed and like a ghost undoes his belt buckle. Yeah. But no, it's it's even weirder. <laughs> it's even weirder. And I think he has like the little pirate, like um, the epaulets or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Like the fraily shoulder, shoulder things. things that captains have. And you're like, what is the scene and why did you keep it in the movie? <laughs> like, I get that the, the you had to trim the scene down. <laughs> But, like, somebody in the editing room was like, oh, Dan gets almost a BJ from this ghost woman in a pirate coat, in a pirate ship. Yeah. It... <laughs> and you said that was the inspiration for it? That's actually, yeah, that he was, did... like, the, that was like the he had like idea a that he had a dream of that, and that's what then he went on to write the original scripts the for Ghostbusters like, for. why did you keep it? And he goes, huh, that was actually <laughs> the inspiration. Like, which I think is really interesting, because, like, I don't know if you either of you experienced this when you're writing, but you have that like seed of an idea, right? Like this is the thing that sparked the story. Oftentimes I find that like by the end of writing the story, I've killed that totally darling. Different. That needs, it's so far different. Like don't keep it. Yeah. And I feel like Dan Aykroyd sat down to write the script and he's like, no, that's staying. It's a uh, boat, boat, pirate ship, flashback, sexy dream. And then he wrote the rest of the rest, <laughs> rest of Ghostbusters. And he's like, well, I don't want to, but like that's where it came from. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, Dan, but it's not the same anymore. Yeah. Yeah. So what yeah. I'm trying to say is if they if they could pull off shit like that in Ghostbusters, yes. I think we could pull off a UA ghost kiss in yeah. this. Like, it, I think that oh, would probably be pretty easy to do. Sokka just like looks at the moon longingly yeah. and it's, oh, you know, yeah. there's like an ode sure. to it or something. And I, it's weird because I tend to lean towards practical effects and that's a practical effect. But I'm I'm so used to the CGI bullshit that was this movie that I'm like, yeah. oh, yeah, I guess we'd have to CGI that. But like, no, you could do a practical and mm-hmm. it would look great. Yeah. That's the way to go. Um, <laughs> so I just need a moment to like step back and. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry to have invoked the thing. Like I'm in the a... ghost blowjob of Dan Aykroyd. Too. Like I'm in a basement. My bladder's full of, you know, city water, city water, street water. <laughs> I'm sweating. I'm so so hungry and tired. <laughs> this and is where your life is. Like we started at three thirty. It's now almost six. And I just talked about, it was only like five minutes, but it was only like five minutes that I just like started to talk about Dan Aykroyd. Uh, You're welcome. You you just have to have those little moments where you step back and look at your life and you're like, yep, Mm -hmm. living the good one. (laughs) So anyway, yeah, no, I I absolutely think we can have that moment where it's it's like, (laughs) anyway, um, girlfriend turned into the moon. (laughs) That's rough, buddy. buddy. (laughs) I assume this is a season two thing that I'm not understanding, right? Three. Three. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's it's fine. You'll get it's, there. It's please. Uh, it's so good. <laughs> so that happens. We cut to Zuko, who's now fighting Zhao, and he intends to kill him, right? Right. Uh, like revenge for him almost getting murdered by Zhao. When Zhao reveals that, like, yo, I understand why you're upset, but it actually wasn't my idea to do that. That was your dad. Like your dad told me to get rid of you because not only. He can't suffer a son who both is a dishonor and a traitor. Well, shit. <laughs> okay. Yeah. He was a dishonor, which is how he got flamey face. Right, um, right. Because he suggested that children shouldn't be killed for war. Are you listening, government? I know you are. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you can just like have, if you, if you could just have like the 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 uh, the just NSA or the FBI government. guy that's assigned to our show, just kind of like make a note of that, and just pass it along. I know, dude, uh, Gary. I know, Gary. It's I rough know it's listening it's to rough. us. I know you do. You work so hard, dude. I'm sorry, but like, he just has to listen to us talk about Dan Aykroyd's ghost business. Look, that I mean, that was for you. That was for you, Gary. That was for you, Gary. Our N- I NSA. Our, NSA slash FBI assigned CIA. He got a promotion. I don't know. Good for you, Gary. I, I hope he did. He works hard. I don't know that FBI would be a promotion from NSA, but why? I have no. I don't. I don't know shit about shit. What are you talking about, <laughs> Gary? Let you us like know. get promoted from one department of the government to another? Like, oh, you're promoted to the next. Department. It's a lateral move, really, but it fits better schedule wise. <laughs> Where am I? <laughs> anyway, <What happened? laughs> Zuko's dad is like, no, I'm no. You're not my son. You. I, I know this probably ex- destroys the no, continuity. No, I'm, I'm trying to think because once we know about later seasons with mm-hmm. Zuko and his dad mm-hmm. and his dad, uh, yep. I'm, I know I, his I dad becomes a much bigger sense. character. I well, yeah, good. Well, he he becomes more than just a shadowy, un, like barely seen figure. Yeah, he yeah. becomes shadowy, looming far figure. Yeah. The Phoenix King. Nice. Sounds pretty Spoiler, cool. Sorry. That is pretty cool. So 
Zhao reveals it to Zuko, and Zuko's like, all right, well, I'm going to let you live, but I have something I want you to say to my father. And he takes both sides of Zhao's face and gives him the burns <laughs> and packs <laughs> a little kiss on the cheek. That's for my dad. That's for my dad. We still love him. Um, toxic families. No, he <laughs> he does the same thing his father did to him with one side of his face. But to both sides. But the both sides of Zhao, who's oh. now blind. Oh my gosh. Okay. Holy wow. shit! Um, he's like, oh, that's tell brutal. That's rough, buddy. That <laughs> is. <laughs> but in, I huh? could see it, unlike Zhao. Ah, oh. I got him! <laughs> so anyway... Um, Sorry for that burn. I don't... <laughs> oh, God! See, this is the reason we have you on the fire. show. Oh, like, my oh God. no! <laughs> I just looked over to my cat for the side. It's like to share my <laughs> eggs. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh my god. I've been holding all the puns in. No, I, I needed it. Like I you were a pun mender, like I Yeah, am. no, and you I just am. proved that mastery. Yeah. Holy oh, shit. Thank god. You for acknowledging so it. anyway, Aang joins with a water spirit. Uh to to wave Avatar. So this is the thing we were talking about, where it's like I still have him using the giant water wave to get rid of the, the fleet. Because money and time, but you had words. Yeah, no, I think I think you absolutely have to do the giant uh, fish golem thing that he does. You know, when he communes with the ocean spirit, because mm-hmm. that that particular use of the avatar state is a specific triggering moment for him. Like it, it is, in terms of like sequel of, of like what happens in the sequel, what happens in, in the other seasons. He's specifically grappling with the destruction that he causes in the Avatar really? state. So, like, episode one of season two starts with him literally having nightmares about everything he's done in the Avatar state. And Well, even, a, even if this was a solo movie, the character of Aang throughout this version of the script is fighting with whether or not he can or would want to become the Avatar. Right. And him right. showing a mastery of just the water, that's not the Avatar. Mm-hmm. He would need to show that he has accepted being an avatar and goes into the avatar state. Mm -hmm. Apparently that means becoming a giant fish golem. I still don't understand that because I've only seen the first season. Because, I mean, it has to do with the balance of the spirits and the nations. Like, the balance had been, and that's the avatar's role, is to bring back the balance. And so... It's like the yin and yang thing. They lost one, and then he just yeah. destroys everything out of the spirit's rage. Yeah, because that's part of what's happening there. Is it's not just Aang going into the Avatar state. It's mm-hmm. him also oh. channeling the vengeance that the ocean spirit yep. is feeling for its twin having been murdered. It's That makes way more sense. Yeah. Yeah. It, it gets it's more cool. in-depth in the later seasons. Because mm-hmm. but... like, one of the key things that you always have to remember is that the Avatar is the bridge between the the physical world and the spiritual realm. Okay. Is... I did, Which I didn't quite get in, Is that in episode one. in season one with the panda? Yeah. Hey, bye. Yeah. The, hey, the, bye. hey, bye spirit. That's, yeah. Because that, I totally forgot because that wasn't in the movie at all. But that mm-hmm. that's important because it's Aang's connection to the spirit world and hey, bye. I was angry because the forest was destroyed. It's kind of like that, but right, way yeah. more important because like this was this took and, away the the sun or the moon. And right, and you kind of touch on like the importance of that aspect of the Avatar with his with like your inclusion of Ko the Face Stealer and mm-hmm. like the way he communes with Roku, which, which like that arguably I think is more important mm-hmm. than than uh, than the Heibai story in particular. Yeah. But that is a really good illustration of. I mean, that could even be something that's included in your, like, training montage stuff. Yeah. Um, but I, but I, I think that now that that is more clear to me, I would want to make it more clear throughout the entire story. That, like, the end goal is for him to be the the conduit between the physical world and the spiritual world. Yeah, and I mean, like, um, in the... And we kind of get that with UA a little bit. Right. But she's not a balance. She, yeah. right. She's not, yeah, she herself isn't like the the balancing force that the avatar is supposed to be like she like she has a close relationship to the spirit world because of what happened in her in her birth like ang is like the glue like, that binds things together knowing that i wouldn't have ua sacrifice herself at that point in the story i would have it after ang and the ocean or the 
Yang and the Ocean Spirit have done their vengeance. Which I think is how it happens in the show. I, I, right. I, I think in the, sh- in the show, it's like, it's not after the vengeance has been had. It's like mm-hmm. they're mid doing that. Yeah. And then, and then she sacrifices herself, I think. Gotcha. Yeah. I yeah. Think... Because it's so cool in the show. Like everything glows and then they like shoop. Yeah. Up, it's a it's, really cool part. It's so cool. And then, yeah. And I think in terms of like in terms of CG for that, like it doesn't have to be this great detailed thing because mm-hmm. there's a, you're, a lot of what you're seeing is going to be obscured by light. A lot of what yeah. you're seeing is going to be fast. It's going to be so oversized and like in shadow and for part for parts of it. So like if you can just get the impression that it is fluid, well, even that it's water, even like, with Oppa, which they weren't able to master, right. There were, aside from that one awful wide shot, <laughs> they got around it by showing only bits of him. Right. So and they could, could do that kind of thing with this, too. Yeah. Only make him yeah. look cute. Because Appa's cute. Oh, yeah. oh. I, I was talking about the water Oh, I was monster. talking about Appa. I was like, because he... Yeah, they really messed up Appa. Look, he's yeah. got to look a little fluffy. Honestly, I think they just went too hard on his face. Yeah, and, and I think they, they realized that because they were like, let's only really show him. Yeah, that. it's like, like they tried to make his face like way too human, which is... Too a human, choice. but also too realistic of a. It like yeah. looked like they really wanted to hit that bison. I'm like, yeah. Well, just make a Totoro. Just make a Totoro. Make a Totoro. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah. No. I I think you can film it in a way that you don't have to show the whole thing, and like if you have to take budget from one area and put it over there, I think for the story it's important. And I think that's the climax of the movie yeah. that should have the most depth. Yeah. Yeah. So that happens. He kicks the shell of the Fire Nation. Um, and with the Fire Nation defeated, Aang returns the water spirit to the koi pond where they do the happy little swim, the fish, fishy swim. Yes. And uh, unfortunately, like, I I couldn't, because Katara gets so screwed over in this draft, it really kind of just ends with Aang returning to the battleground and being recognized as the Avatar. Like, he, he has made his journey from frozen, frozen popsicle airbender to recognized for being an Avatar. Mm-hmm. So we we did we fixed it we fixed it we did. So I mean I think there are some some issues. I think this adaptation would have one issue in particular that I think I think Shyamalan's version has, and that's the it lacks enough setup for the explosion that's supposed to kill Zuko. At oh, least sure, in, sure. at least oh, in yeah. the in the yeah. way you outlined it, I still had the question in my mind is like it still kind of feels like yeah. big, big boom for big yeah. reason. Yeah, I don't know. The show was, it had to do with the pirates and the scroll, and then the pirates right. were hired. So yeah. like that made more sense. And like, you, like, they give you the trail of like this, like you know this clash had happened, and you know Zhao is capitalizing on that mm-hmm. oh you know what you could do the the, the archer who shoots zuko mm-hmm. have like an ode like he gives him a look and then the archer is the one who like goes in and blows up the ship or something just okay there's so like they're a connecting connection yeah so that it's hinted that it's Zhao and it's kind of built yeah. up but it's... that's then another throwback to the show as well mm-hmm. because those archers and like yeah, their prowess pretty cool part. is yeah. yeah like that's a pretty cool inclusion okay so you could even have it that like the ship it was like a gas leak or whatever in the movie. You can have it <laughs> yep. so that, like, hit this box full of dynamite with a fire yeah, arrow. Yeah, he shoots a flame arrow and zooms in and you see that's like, yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what I would... So what I will say is this this version, this script that we put together, it's a fix of the Shyamalan movie. Yes. Mm-hmm. If somebody was like, write a script for Avatar The Last Airbender, do, do whatever you want to do. I wouldn't adapt the whole first season. I would adapt it up until Aang and Zuko escape using the blue spirit. I would just cover that. It's like, what, halfway through the first season? About. About, Yeah. Yeah, Um, And have that fight escape from Zhao be the the climax. Okay. If they told me to make an Avatar movie, they were like, do whatever you want. I would be like, okay, it's not live action. (laughs) Right, yeah. That, that to me, I, I... I won't get into it, but and then it would be like a prequel or like an mm-hmm. after yeah. episode. It because it's so to hard to do adaptations, especially yeah. for that because the world building and animation is so much easier than it is bringing that to the real world. And then also, it's it's a lot. Cool. So, what do we think of our Durazzle version? What's its tomato Rotten Tomatoes IMDb score? I think. IMDb, I don't think, is going to go up quite as hard as the other ones that we had done here. Partially because it doesn't have quite as low a rating as some of them. Like, but, Yeah. Uh, I mean, in particular, it doesn't have nearly as low a rating as uh, Battlefield Earth. 
But I think that this would get up to at least like a five and a half, maybe a six on IMDb. That's what I was thinking. Rotten Tomatoes wise, I think this would see a much more significant leap. Maybe into... I think that this would potentially get past the 50% range. I don't think it would have be able to get further than that just because of... We're talking about the general or the audience? As you say, audience, I feel like it would be 50-50. Like they're either going to love it yeah. or they're mm-hmm. going to hate it. Yes, yeah, I think I th- like 48% for the general. Personally. Okay. 48% for general. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, I think that's probably fair. Audience, audiences, as you said, are usually more forgiving. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think because of the departures from, from the source material in the opening, I think that's going to cause some people to sour mm-hmm. a little bit. So mm-hmm. I think, I think honestly, I think it would be probably around the, uh, the same as the IMDb, like 5.5 to 6, so 55 to 60, yeah. some, somewhere around there. Still a market improvement. Yeah, no, it's definitely watchable now. <laughs> yeah, it's not a mess of exposition and weird close-ups and odd yeah. one-shot choices. If Sokka's in slow it, motion. he's got jokes, I'll watch it. Once he yeah. jokes. I mean, you you objectively have a better Sokka here. Yeah. Great. We, we did it. We did it. Thank, <laughs> thank both of you, plus one cat, for suffering along, <laughs> uh, fixing, fixing this movie. Faith. Faith is a person who does things. Yeah. And yes. you can find her. What's your address? <laughs> <laughs> you you have the insta instas. That's all right. Okay. I really don't. You you're not allowed to find not you, Faith. You, the audience. <laughs> you're not allowed to find her. I'll let you know when you can when she's written things that you can read. Yes, that's there yes. you go. Yes. Perfect. Stay tuned for. The stuff she's written. Joe, where can people find you? I mean, as I'm still on the Instagrams at JM Nealis and nowhere else currently. That might change. Who knows? Uh, you can find me on the socials as dollboy underscore Jack. You can find the live streams on the Twitches and the YouTubes. It's all under Derazzled. Um, and you can subscribe to Derazzled, the thing that you're listening to at this very moment. You just hit that button. It's, it's really pretty easy. Um, and you should do it because we promised to... Uh, razzle dazzle ya! Oh, the old <laughs> razzle dazzle! <laughs> yeah, razzle-dazzle-ya. yeah, we will. We'll do that. Or right, bye, bye, bye.